This is Comic Geek Speak, episode 1933, Previews. Welcome to Comic Geek Speak. I'm Ian Levison. I'm Adam Murdo. And I'm Chris Eberle. Comic Geek Speak! All right. Well, welcome one and all to the show. And uh, it is indeed previews time here at the last possible second of the month of March. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you ever have one of those marches where days just completely slip away from you and you're like, holy crap, it's the 27th. We should probably do something about that. Mar- March, is, March is kind of an abyss to me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of those marches that includes the Easter holiday, too. So. Yes, yes. And, and, and here in New York, uh, it, it, that means split spring break. Uh, as uh, in the uh, in the uh, school system, they're getting off Friday and Monday of this week, and then they don't actually get their full spring break until Passover at the end of April. So it's weirdness, to say the least. But uh, hey, Martha got some days off, so lucky her. Mine starts Friday, runs for a full 10 days. Ah, glorious. Quite anticipatory, yes, indeed. Nice, nicely done, nicely done. I'll be I'll be spending the uh, the later uh, one, however, uh, in Cleveland, and I, I hope to potentially stop by the Superman house uh, while I'm there. It's not it's not it's ah, not it's, right. not it's not a definite, but uh, that's on my agenda of possibly stopping by outside of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and seeing a Guardians game. So that should be mm-hmm. rollicking good fun at the end of April. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so before we get started here with our festivities, uh, two things of note uh, before I hand it over to Murad as a reminder for our best of uh, just a quick note on uh, the uh, Comic Geek Speak forums. Now, uh, it's it's something that's existed for many, 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 many years at this point. <laughs> um, and unfortunately, uh, it, it's it's as of now in its dying days, uh, the the attendance on the forums has been dwindling for quite some time and you know with 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 the facebook supergroup and you know with other forms of social media uh it's kind of become a back burner type thing and it's also unfortunately uh an expensive back burner and uh we are looking to essentially sunset the forums uh sometime in the in the future um we will give you a set date when we have it um but basically take this as the announcement and i'll I'll also post it on you know in other locations as well that if you want to have time to be able to back up your posts and uh, you know back up anything on the forums that you may want uh from over the years uh that now would be the time to do so um there may potentially be alternative uh ways to socialize outside of the supergroup that we may bring up uh in the future uh but uh i'm gonna leave those for, as potential possibilities uh down the road and if we have anything to announce we will but just one of the you know make sure that, that announcement is out there that uh although it's been a very important part of the show over the years and we wouldn't be here without it I, the time has come on on the forums unfortunately so and those are the forums that were always too tough to quit they were read launched multiple times oh, yes. survived all kinds of yep <laughs> <laughs> I, so, sometimes i sometimes i actually go back on the uh on the uh the internet day on the you know the wayback machine on the internet uh just to see what it looked like way back when uh because there are a couple of different versions of the forums that are still archived on the internet archive and will continue to be there as long as there is an internet archive so you want to see what the uh early early forms of it were with like the rotating gifts and uh all the uh all the old school cgs artwork on the top with the uh with the animation style uh cgs brethren and what have you uh that that's all there for you to be able to bask in its glory on the internet archives but yeah it's it, it's had a very good run but unfortunately all good things come to an end and uh, it it just honestly makes more sense at this point than anything else so 
I I I, I lift my my H two O in your honor uh, forums, and we'll we'll let you know as I said when we actually get to the actual last day of the forums. Meanwhile, uh, talking about participation, uh, Murd has much happier news on how you can participate this year in the uh, the Best of 2023 uh, nomination slate. Mm -hmm. That's right, Ian. Folks, the uh, Comic Geek Speak uh, Best of 2023 awards voting process is now underway. Uh, we, in our last episode, uh, established the full slate of nominees in all 16 categories in which we will be awarding the coveted Jamie Awards. So... If you'd like to be a part of that process, by all means, please do. Uh, you can go to uh, the aforementioned, uh, soon to be no longer for this world, uh, Comic Geek Speak forums, or you can go to our supergroup at Facebook to find the complete ballot. And uh, based on that, you can then come up with your own uh, uh, choices. Uh, please vote for one nominee and one nominee only in at least 12 of the 16 categories. We prefer all 16, but we give you that leeway. There are a few categories in which you're not familiar with any of the nominees, so that's fine. But uh, please vote for one nominee and one only in at least 12 of the 16 categories. Write it all down in an email to be sent to bestof, B-E-S-T-O-F, at comicgeekspeak.com. And your deadline for that is 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the evening of Sunday, April Seventh. Yes. <laughs> yep. I had I had the what I had the what Easter. I had the what that up myself. So yeah, yeah. March seventh at eleven fifty nine Eastern is indeed the uh, the time. It's also available on the uh, on the YouTube uh, site youtube.com dot slash comic speak. If you had the community, there's a full ballot there, and uh, one of our most recent Instagram posts also has the full ballot. So if you access into Instagram from uh, your laptop you'd be able to copy paste and see it or you know if you're on your phone you still have the option of looking at it at least so that there are plenty of ways to find the ballots you just have to fill them out so there we go mm -hmm. excellent and i will have my ballot to you murd uh in the not too distant future because i very much want to participate all right fantastic <laughs> thank you ian excellent all right, let's get this party a rolling here and get ourselves ready for this month's previous catalogs. And uh, DC Connect, issue 46, uh, image catalog, whatever catalog it is, uh, <laughs> previews 426, and uh, Marvel's previews are uh, issue 30 this month. And uh, as has been the norm of the past couple of months, we will be beginning in the image catalog, the much prettier image catalog than what they throw into the diamond version uh, mm. with this excellent cover here of a major Transformers battle to look forward to uh, once you open up the pages. So looking forward to talking about that. But let's start off on page four as Scotty Young and Jorge Corona start off with a five-issue miniseries, Ain't No Grave. It's uh, a unforgiven style journey uh, uh, in an original ma macabre Western fantasy tale for mature readers told through a Guillermo del Toro-esque lens. Writer, that's, that's quite a hybrid right there. To Ooh. say the least. <laughs> Writer put her violent past behind her when she fell in love and became a mother. Uh, now that now that was before she learned it was all going to be taken away. Now she'll have to pick up her guns once more and ride the kill, uh, the one who's behind the threat, which just happens to be death itself. Wow. Double length issue, 40 pages. Yep. And look at that. That art is art. gorgeous. Oh, my God. Wow, man, man, oh man, Zoinks. oh man! Woo. Woo. It, it, it's funny too. We, we, you know, we we just talked to Dave Wachter not long ago, and we talked about how hard it can be to draw horses, and those are some damn fine horses right here. <laughs> and also, the, the the coloring is stunning. Oh, it really is. It really yeah, beautiful really work. Is. Yep. So you can check that out once again on page four and the subsequent uh, preview pages on the next couple of pages up until page ten. Sean Lewis, Bear Pirate Viking Queen, which I think might actually be my favorite new title uh, for a series. Sounds like it sounds like a, t a title from like a 1980s indie comic. It it reminds me of there's an episode of the show News Radio uh, where uh, Stephen Root's character writes a book and uh, it gets translated into, I believe, 
Chinese and then translated back into English. And that's the version that they publish. And it beca- and the uh, the title of it becomes Super Karate Monkey Death Guard. <laughs> <laughs> so yes bear pirate viking queen very much gives me uh, super karate monkey death car vibes <laughs> sean sean lewis uh blood spattering story of conquest bears pirates vikings and queens all battling for their claim to determine what the world will become my vote is on the bears quite frankly i think the bears <laughs> are gonna do it yep Fuck bears yep you know what? That reminds me. Just recently, I finally watched Cocaine Bear. Oh my god, it's so good! <laughs> <laughs> what? I was immensely entertained. <laughs> what a gloriously unhinged movie that! Uh, <laughs> the mere fact that movie exists is entertaining in itself. <laughs> I know, I know, it's so good, so good. Uh, this is on page eleven here. It's seventy-two pages, by the way, uh, and only five dollars. That is a wow. damn good deal, and uh, the artwork to boot. Looks like it is going to be an experience in and of itself. Look at that double page spread. Wow. Wowzers. Man, that's like some, that's some uh, J.H. Williams level stuff right there. Yeah, it really is. Yep. So do check that out on page 11. I am looking forward to this. Joe Casey and Paul Fry on page 16. 30 years ago, they were America's premier celebrity superhero team. Seen on television, on tabloid magazine covers, scoring million-dollar endorsement deals. They were everywhere. Now, a new generation takes up the mantle, or perhaps the poison chalice, fulfilling a promise made decades ago to be the heroes that a fractured America needs. They are Blood Squad 7, number one. (laughs) <laughs> yep the deconstruction of 90s image continues to be a big thing these days yeah. and yeah this is joe kelly that uh, casey i mean joe casey yep. taking his turn at it and uh he's yeah he's gonna do a good job with it i think i'm gonna give this series a look yes he is the uh the cover b by chris weston i love but that jim rug cover d oh my god oh my word oh, <laughs> beautiful absolutely beautiful that's a lot of pa- that's a lot of pouches. <laughs> you better damn well believe it. Yep, man. Yeah, and of course a foil incentive cover just to bring home the bacon on the '90s uh, pastiche right here. So yeah, page sixteen for that one. Uh, I'm all in. This this, this sounds great. <laughs> uh, and now the payoff for the cover of this uh, this particular previews, Energon Universe 2024 special number one. Uh, This is a new printing of the free comic book day special featuring three all new stories from the Energon universe with stunning revelations for the worlds of Transformers, G.I. Joe and Void Rivals from the biggest names in comics on page 18. So for those of you who missed the free comic book day issue and want to pay four dollars for it, you sure can do it now. (laughs) At least it has extra content, because if they were just charging that much for straight-up free comic book day, I'd be a bit disappointed. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yep. Ah! Remender. Promets. Mm-hmm. And Brian Posehn. Yes! (laughs) That's a combination. Uh Uh-huh. Man. Uh, And Brett Parson on the artwork with Moreno uh, Denicio as well uh, here on page uh, 20. It's going to be a seven-issue miniseries uh, set in 1984 in suburban Sacramento, where they find a home in skateboard culture and punk rock. Wow, this is this is a, a this captures a very specific era. This is this is a really interesting concept. It really is. Yep, coming of age. Like I, I, I remember in high school, like this would bleed a little bit into some of the subcultures of my my school too. <laughs> really interesting. Yeah, and the I I love the character designs on the uh, on the cover itself. Uh, I I discussed how I I really appreciate when uh, kids actually look like kids. Yeah, and that is bleeding through on these preview pages on the next couple here. So yeah, this is this is going to be great. And uh, having Remender and Pasane teaming up, it's probably going to be a little bit unhinged, but I am all for that. And uh, check that out on page 20 for the issue one of the seven issue mini. Whole lot of skull t shirts and a whole lot of skateboarding. <laughs> Lego Ninjago Shatter Spin. 
it's a Lego comic book. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Tree Vuong bringing this together. So any of you Ninjago fans, you have something to read on page 27. And uh, at least the artwork looks very Lego-y. I'll give them that, at least according to the cover. <laughs> All right, moving down a little bit further here. An original graphic novel by Bear McCreary. Hmm. Yeah, this is... It's known as a composer of music. Indeed. Oh, comic. Yeah. Yeah, this is awesome. Uh, inspired by and a companion to uh, Bear McQuarrie's first ever original concept album of the same name, the singularity sees a cavalcade of comics greatest artists join with writer Matt Groom to tell a sweeping cosmic story about the lessons that loss can teach us. This I am very interested in. Bear McCreary is a wonderful, uh, you know, uh, composer and has done so for many, many of my favorite shows over the years. And yeah, this this sounds like a really cool concept mm. here on page 29. Mm. It, could be, uh, I mean, it could be into 2001 territory in terms of weight, the way that story is coming across in the description. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely. All right. Ashley Wood, War Remastered, page 30. This is uh, representing... Uh, Ashley Wood and T.P. Louise's uh, three, uh, lore in a three d deluxe, extra-length, fully re-lettered issues. So if you didn't check it out the first time, it's uh, available in deluxe format uh, for 10 bucks an issue uh, in this three-issue uh, miniseries on page 30. Gorgeous artwork to go along with it oh, as well. Oh, my. Yeah. You had me at Zadarsky. You had yep, me, sure you, did. You double had me at Anka, for that matter. So you've got my, one of my favorite writer-artists and one of my favorite artists, period, uh, on this miniseries. I'm all over this. <laughs> uh, the Whisper Queen. The I don't really care what it's about. If Zadarsky's writing, I'm going to try it. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah, well, this is... This is uh, uh, they return to the fantastical land of Black Sand for this one. So this is... Uh, in the White Trees universe, and uh, the Royal Guard has sent their most capable bounty hunters after the accomplices in the King's murder. Javro, once the King's most skilled assassin, must find the killers before they and the bounty hunters, including her son, are wiped out by the kingdom's most feared specter, the Dark Whisper. Yeah, this this sounds awesome. And Sadarsky and Anka, two of the best uh, creators in comics, Teaming together again here for a three-issue mini on 37. Yeah, that's that's great. Oh, and that artwork is beautiful. Wow. Oof. Oh, man. Chris Anka recently... Reminds me, reminds me a bit of like uh, Charles Vess or... It, it also, it also, it also reminds that. me a little bit of Waringo, actually. Ah, uh, I see that too. Good mm -hmm. call. Good call, Evie Poo. Yep. Or P. Craig Russell, like that really beautiful stylized line, just very mm -hmm. ethereal... Perfect for fairy tale type environments. Great stuff. Yep. Good work on the coloring too, for that matter. Yep. Excellent use of shading. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just in case you missed that uh, two issue White Breeze mini series, uh, to which this is the sequel, uh, they're reprinting it in a single volume, the White Trees One Shot, collecting both issues, seventy two pages in full color for a mere five ninety nine. Not bad. Which I'll be ordering because I've never read this. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Chris Anka, uh, fresh off the heels of the uh, storyboard work and uh, character design for Across the Spider-Verse. Uh, he, he helped on the, on the behind the scenes of that movie and did a damn fine job of it. Yep. All right. Moving down a little bit further into the catalog, Blood Strike by Rob Liefeld. <laughs> that certainly exists. And here it is in trade paperback form. On page 50, any of you Liefeld heads, he has feet, ladies and gentlemen. He has feet. You, you, you never can resist that crack. It's it's <laughs> too easy. It's too easy. Mind you, it still looks like the feet are a little bit dislocated, but it's close enough. It's close enough. <laughs> uh, God look, bless him. Look at that classic Liefeld pose, though. You know, like the, the, yeah. the, 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 the I call it the frog jump because it, uh, like, <laughs> so, so many of his heroes have used that frog jump pose over the years. Oh man. Deep Cuts has me intrigued. Page 56. I read the first volume, uh, the, the first story. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting. It, it didn't 
it wasn't the most, the favorite thing I've, I've read by Kyle Higgins, but it was certainly interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it was about a, a clarinet player, like trying to break into the, the jazz scene in yeah. that era. I don't remember. I still this quite a few months ago, but mm-hmm. great artwork. Um, it, it was, it was, it was, it kept my interest, but again, didn't, didn't make me, you know, have any kind of fanboy orgasm. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Not, not quite a uh, level, but still, yeah. but still <laughs> decent enough. Uh, well, this this collects all the first six issues of that uh, uh, run uh, here uh, in uh, trade paperback form on page 56, if you were interested. Hack Slash Back to School by Zoe Thorogood on page 59 collects issues one through four of the Back to School miniseries. Mm-hmm. Yep. She's on the ballot for uh, Best uh, Writer Artist, I believe. Yep. Uh, for the Best of 2023 awards. Mm-hmm. And she and guess what? She's doing the story and she's doing the artwork. What a concept. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hexagon Bridge uh, collected here as well. Richard Blake's uh, story on page 61. Uh, Beautiful cover. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what immediately drew my eye to it. Uh, After explorers Jacob and Elena uh, Armlin find themselves trapped in a strange parallel dimension, their clairvoyant daughter Adley and sentient robot Staden embark on a dangerous mission to rescue them. Kind of a lost in space style scenario going on here, only involving the multiverse. Not bad at all. Hexagon Bridge on page 61. Five issues Uh. collected for 15. Yep, and here's your newborn... This is Newburns. The Chips of Darsky we're working with, working with Sean Phillips' son, Jacob Phillips, who's also a very formidable artist and colorist. Mm-hmm. And this is the the conclusion of the, the Newburn story. So there's two trades. This is volume two. If you love noir and, and, and stories about police corruption and uh, you know, the underworld and how, how all those themes might intersect, definitely read Newburn. Superb. Mm-hmm. I want to point out too. This is uh, seven issues of the, of the book, uh, you know, concluding it, and only seventeen bucks for for vo- for this volume too. Yeah, that's the price. That's that's a really good price for one hundred and seventy six pages these days. Yep, definitely. Knights season one part one uh, collects the first six issues of uh, Wyatt Kennedy's st- supernatural creatures story, taking place in two thousand three. Uh, very, very different world as America is made up of 31 states and mm. Vince Akanma ha- has lost his parents, moved in with his secret mercenary cousin and his video game making roommate and befriended the greatest vampire who's ever lived. And that's just the first 20 pages. <laughs> yeah, this this may have my interest. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Wyatt Kennedy and Luigi uh, Formasano on the writing and artwork chores on this one for six issues for a good old image price of nine ninety nine for that first volume. Ah, uh, yes, the good old days. Mm-hmm. Page sixty three. How many? How many copies of Why the Last Man One that I stole in my sword nine ninety nine? Innumerable. Only imagine. <laughs> This is something I will be picking up as I I, I have foregone the uh, the digital copies. So whether I pick it up digitally as a volume or whether I pick it up in person as a volume, uh, Dan Warren Johnson's Transformers Volume One collects the first six issues of that new series. It's Dan Warren Johnson. He's drawing giant monsters. There's explosions. What else do you need? And it is available for you on page sixty seven. For seventeen dollars, one hundred and thirty-six pages, collects Transformers one through six. They can upcharge a little bit because it's Transformers. Interesting Universal Monsters Dracula hardcover by James Tinney well, in the fourth got, here. Yeah, you got a story by James Tinney in the fourth. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and it's it's riffing. I'm assuming it's riffing on the the Universal movie version of the story of Dracula. Mm-hmm. So, oh, yes. it looks fantastic. Yep. When, when you have Robert Kirkman with a poll quote on it saying, the Dracula comic I've wanted all my life, <laughs> uh, that that that's some good praise right there. <laughs> yeah. Page 68 has it, uh, all four issues available for you uh, for $25 uh, in trade paperback form. Oh, sorry, in hardcover form on page 68. Issue 5 of 5 of the Cobra Commander mid-series, miniseries. I'm really... In- Really enjoying thus far both this and Duke. I'm more, more farther along on Duke, but 
how they're introducing a completely new version of G.I. Joe in this Energon universe. Mm. So you're getting in on the ground floor in a sense, but it's still the characters that you know and love. It's just it's just a different version. It's been really superb so far. I'm really enjoying it. Nice. Well, this is uh, the fifth and final issue of that, which means trade paperback incoming and uh, on sale May 15th, page 72 for that. Feral issue three, for those of you uh, following along with Tony Fleek's uh, story this time around, uh, as Elsie, Ward, and Patch learn the rules for survival, but will they follow them? Page 76 for that. And uh, issue two of Geiger on page 79, followed by G.I. Joe Real American Hero 306. On and again, I have, to say, I have to sing the praise of this series. Anybody... Who grew up reading a real American hero, the original Mahama Marvel series? Mm -hmm. You got you, you've got to come home to this. Well, it's, it's really the same series as the number they've retained the classic numbering. Mm -hmm. You read this, but you read this series, you're home. And the, 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 Chris Mooneyham is the main artist. He's taking a break from in this run, but his artwork is outstanding. Oh yeah, on this series, and wow. I, I think Shane noticed. I'm sorry, Mary, go ahead. I was just going to say Paul Pletty is filling in for him, and that's which is no slouch there either. Yeah, yes. absolutely, um, but. Not. I think Shane mentioned this a while ago. I, I agree with him. So Hama continued his G.I. Joe run eventually after the Marvel run stopped. And it kind of bounced around to different companies. Mm -hmm. I would leaf through them on occasion. But I often found the artwork I didn't think was to the level that the stories demanded. Yeah. And now it's at the level the stories demand. And it, it Hama still has it. And these are really exciting G.I. Joe stories. And in, and in that steeped in that tradition. So. Yep. Well, do check that out on page 80 for those of you who are following along. And let's see, I don't think it's going to be in here because I haven't heard anything of an update. I will say that the uh, it's a new story arc for Local Man, uh, issue 10 on page 89. So uh, if you have the first trade paperback and you want to skip along a little bit, uh, then this is a brand new story arc in between that. I believe uh, volume two will be filling that gap as well. But I'm still I'm still suffering through the long Lazarus hiatus. Oof. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> well, there's also a saga hiatus still. That's what I'm yes, hoping yeah. for here. Yep. Oh, well. Ah, well. I'm sure they'll do a huge announcement. Two of the best in the business. Two of the best in the business. Guarantee you they'll do a huge announcement like they did the last time around to let yeah. us know that it's a coming, and then they'll put out 12 in a row, and then they'll go away again. It'll, it'll, mm -hmm. it'll, that's the way it, that's I'll, way it I'll, works. For both of those titles, they'll take whatever the magnificent creative teams uh, deign to provide. Mm-hmm. And Transformers issue 8 on page 105. Welcome to Cybertron. Featuring the return of Spoiler. Yes. Yep. Not the DC Comics one, the robot. Mm, no. <laughs> Quick question, Ian, because you're more knowledgeable about Transformers than I am. Yeah. In the various incarnations of the story, mm -hmm. do we see a lot of Cybertron or not really? It, it completely depends on on which story because uh, the original like OG Transformers was almost all Earth outside right. of the movies and uh, a little bit more like war building here and there. Um, Beast Wars mm -hmm. has tons of, of Cybertron. Uh, and, and actually, when it becomes Beast Machines, it's all Cybertron because it's like, mm -hmm. is Cybertron Earth? Like, there was a whole thing going on with that. It was it was mm -hmm. getting very, very steeped in, like, mechanical lore there. But mm -hmm. it really just depends on the version of Transformers more than anything else. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious. Yep. It's never really been like a Cybertron. Oh, sorry, it never really been like a uh, a Krypton situation where you know it's entirely destroyed or whatnot. So gotcha. Page one hundred five, Transformers number eight, Dan Warren Johnson and Jorge Corona, and Void Rivals on page one hundred seven. It reaches its issue nine, and that is about it here for Image. As we head over to the main previews catalog. And a titillating cover, but Space Ghost on the other cover. So how about that? <laughs> <laughs> takes, all, takes all kinds. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. All right. A reminder once again, by the way, that Free Comic Book Day will be coming up soon. Uh, if you haven't gotten your orders into your local comic shop, do get them in. And uh, that will be the first week in May, as usual, May 4th, 2024. 
Uh, there will not be a comic book movie accompanying it this time around. Uh, but at least you get to have Johnny Quest out of Dynamite written by someone with art by someone. <laughs> Not even to be determined. It literally just says someone. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate the candor. Wow. Some Somebody's drawing this and somebody's writing it. We'll figure it out eventually. Oh, man. All right. On we go to the beginning here with Boom and on page 48. And as usual, I will have to zoom in for my 40-year-old eyes. For the Armory Wars, oh, No World for Tomorrow, number one of 12. Claudio Such Sanchez, a young man. I, get off my lawn. Uh, Claud Claudio <laughs> Sanchez and, Ch and Chandra Eckhart, uh, illustrated by uh, Guillaume Martinez. It's the return of the science fiction epic that fans have been eagerly awaiting uh, as uh, they return to their Armory Wars saga here on page 48 with a new 12-issue mini. Or Maxi, if you prefer. Mm, nice. Vintage callback, Levy mm -hmm. Pooh. Very nice. Thank you. Nothing like an old Maxi series. Ah, yes. Meanwhile, Philip Kennedy Johnson has a new comic out. Crocodile Black, number 105, by Somnith Powell on the illustrations. As Philip Kennedy Johnson returns to Boom. What makes someone turn to crime, especially in a modern pandemic real dystopia? Danny, a seemingly mundane young man lost in escapism with a spiraling lack of control over his life, witnesses something during a delivery job that will change him forever, turning things as dark as the black crocodile skin boots that he can't take his eyes off of. Mm. Hmm. Well, they're comparing it to Elmore Leonard, so that's that's no small praise there. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Crime thriller saturated in pandemic-fueled anxiety and delusion and... <laughs> And plus, there's uh, probably imaginary crocodiles floating around. So, yep. Seems like fun. As long as those crocodiles are imaginary and they're not trying to eat me, I'm A OK -okay with that. Well, you know, <laughs> crowd blacking is often shocking when your feet just can't see, keep still. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for that, Murd. Thank you. <laughs> it, was, it took every ounce of willpower I had not to just break into song. Again, so. Oh, come on. That's all counter uh, blessings. No, nonsense, sir. Nonsense. Oh, man. Page <clears throat> 52, uh, Briar number five of eight. Uh, Chris Cantwell continues his Briar uh, eight-issue mini here. Uh, I read the first issue way back when. It was great. I'm going to wait for the trade, though. Fair enough. You will have that in three issues, my friend, so stay yep. tuned for that. Oh, man, great artwork, too. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah. whole bunch of preview pages on the next couple there. God, you know, damn it, comics are pretty damn good these days. They are. They really are. There's a are. lot of good stuff out there. Mm -hmm. Like, something is killing the oh, children. Oh, jeez. Number, th <laughs> number, th number 37 here. Okay. See, I picture you now like on a vaudeville stage and the crowd is turned on you and they take the, the hook to like kind of pull you off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, go, I'll go grab a hook from the other room. <laughs> Mainly I'm calling this one out for the cover because, man, is that a good cover. Yeah, it page, sure is. Page 56. And, and the uh, and the Dustin Wynn incentive cover on 57 is just as gorgeous. All right, moving on a little bit further. Uh, issue 15 and the final issue of Once Upon a Time at the End of the World by Jason Aaron, illustrated by Nick Dragota. And uh, this concludes their three-chapter epic post-apocalyptic adventure. And... I look forward to seeing this all collected as one 15 page does. hardcover. Yeah, yeah my sentiment. Yep. Oh yeah, fifteen issue. Uh, that is, it's going to be a lot more than fifteen pages. But uh, yeah, that page sixty one. Uh, if you want to get it in singles, and I am very much looking forward to the trade for that. Amy Jo Johnson concludes her uh, Power Rangers: The Return miniseries that she's co writing along with Matt Hudson. Amy Jo Johnson, of course, the original Pink Ranger of the Power Rangers, on page sixty four. Now, Leverue, I know you're a Power Rangers fan. Have you read any of these modern incarnations in the comics? I've read uh, a little bit of the early issues, uh, and I frankly need to read more because it's it's all been great. I mean, Dan Mora obviously did the artwork for a whole bunch of them, and that there you go. immediately yeah. is a sign of 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 you know excellence. But uh, yeah, I, I, I got to catch myself up definitely. 
All righty. The uh, Best of nominations contain several nods to the creative teams of uh, of Boom's Power Rangers comics. Mm -hmm. so the listeners, or some of them anyway, are paying attention. Yep. And, and Kyle Higgins was the guy who basically restarted that entire thing uh, before he moved on to uh, to other adventures. Mech Cadets Command and Control soft cover. The Greg Pack. Yeah, and, and Takeshi uh, Miyazawa. So nice, nice pedigree on that. Uh, been a been a huge fan of uh, Takeshi's work on She Hulk and elsewhere. Uh, this collects all six issues of the Mech Cadets series, page sixty six. Very much a uh, a like Robotech esque feel going on here with the Mech Cadets, and I know that that's also a uh, a Netflix animated series uh, that's going to go along with this. So looking forward to that on page sixty six. And mm -hmm. onward we go to Saladin Ahmed's Abbott 1979, collecting all five issues of that miniseries, so along with Sammy uh, Cavella on the art chores. W was very interesting. Um, I'm getting getting real Pam Greer vibes here. Loving it. Oh, yeah. Yep. yep. On the eve of the 80s and the Reagan administration, Detroit is burned with, burdened with an oppressive darkness, both political and supernatural. Yeah, that, that sounds fantastic. Page 72. All right. And I think that's going to about do it for Boom. Although, you know what? I'll, I'll mention this just because just I have to. Rugrats, Bestest Comics, Book One, Soft Cover, Box Brown, and Pranis uh, T. Uh, Nujakatis. Nujakatis? Maybe? Maybe? Mm -hmm. eh, close yeah, enough. maybe. Close, close, <laughs> close enough. Close enough. Co collects the first eight issues of Rugrats here. Uh, happy to see Rugrats back in any form. Happy to see it back in a 2D form because I wasn't too big a fan of the 3D reboot that Paramount put out a little while ago. Uh, but this mm -hmm. is uh, 80, uh, page 80, collects the first eight issues of that all in one package. Only 17 bucks for 208 pages. Nice all ages comic books here. All right, on um, we go to Dynamite and the Return of Space Ghost with David Piposi on the writing chores. Mm -hmm. That makes me happy. Yep, yep. He's the man who brought us Savage Avengers and made Conan an Avenger. Ah, uh, yes. He's, uh, Dave Wechter's par partner in crime on the new Punisher. Mm -hmm. uh, he wrote that Spencer and Locke thing a while ago, which is like a hard-boiled uh, Calvin and Hobbes. Mm -hmm. And uh, now he's taking on Space Ghost, uh, partnered up with uh, CTS listener Jonathan Lau as artist. Fantastic. Clear, clearly, he just loves working with uh, CGS listeners as as his art team, and we're okay with that. We're very okay. Yeah, with sure. That. <laughs> we encourage it. In fact, indeed. I take it this is this is a serious take on Space Ghost, mm -hmm. more or less, yeah. from, from the sound of it. Yeah. yeah. I highly doubt he's going to be interviewing celebrities in, in this in this book, but yeah, uh, page page eighty seven has the uh, the full solicit for it. They call him the Space Ghost, and his adventures begin here mm -hmm. yeah not the not the first time they've tried to make space ghost a little bit more serious i remember uh a a, a take a, a alex ross did a cover for a version that's of right space I'm, ghost. I'm picturing mm -hmm. the covers now yep. okay yeah uh, that miniseries was written by joe kelly mm -hmm. i can't remember who did the artwork for that but yeah it was definitely a serious origin story for you know tad ghostal as uh, mm -hmm. as space ghost was that dc comics and this that time out? it was dc yeah yeah that's what i thought that's right Mm -hmm. Yep. And yeah, this time around, it's Dynamite's take. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yep. Some pretty keen looking variant covers, especially oh, wow. uh, that one by uh, Michael, Michael Cho. Cho. Oh. oh, yeah. Beautiful stuff there. Are. Wow. <laughs> Folks, it's Saturday morning again. Yes, <laughs> yes, it most definitely is. And the interior pages on display by, by Jonathan Lau are gorgeous. Man. All right. Thundercats issue four. I gotta catch up on this at some point. Declan Shelby, Drew Moss, writing and writing an art. I think Shane said that he that he checked this out and enjoyed it, if I remember correctly. But uh, mm. yeah, this is this is uh, the fourth issue of that ongoing Thundercats series here on page ninety seven. Great Declan Shelby uh, Mumra cover on the uh, on the next uh, on the next page there. And issue two of Hercules, page one hundred one. Notice how Dynamite is boasting in the solicits uh, about all covers cardstock. Yeah. Mm. 
but I don't see it as a particular advantage, really. I mean, it's just kind of an excuse to add another dollar to the price point. I'd be just as happy with the traditional um, floppy paper covers and uh, you know, save a dollar. I would agree with you on that, quite frankly. Yeah, I, I feel like we're back. We're past the point where that is act- an actual selling point. <laughs> Murd, you're the best kind of conservative. I love you. <laughs> the fiscal kind? <laughs> yes. Just the grouchy n- kind? N- 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 no, nostalgia, you know. <laughs> An older way of doing things that still works. Mm, yeah. Yes. And, and and of course, pointing out Lilo and Stitch issue five by Greg Pak on page 103. Gargoyle's Quest Continues by Greg Weissman on 105. But that's not all. There's so much more to come from Dynamite in May. Vampira, Vampirella, Elvira, Army of Darkness, James Bond 007, Red Sonia. Those are all still happening. Uh, just, just so you're aware, they, they really wanted us to know that they still had further solicitations. I'm not quite sure why they did that. Because <laughs> it's not- an extra page. They didn't have anything else to. <laughs> the uh, sell on. Uh, the Garth and his James Bond. There's been two issues out. Is is oh, it's a sheer delight. Yep. He's he's just doing a really. It's the, there's, there's a bit of that. Is that humor? But it's such a ruthless, cold Bond at the same time. It's so good. Nice. All right. So, uh, and yeah, image we did already. So I'm just going to set us up for past image once we are ready here. There we go. Line it up accordingly. And they have way more solicitations than I thought. Okay, there we go. We'll leave off at Titan. But first, onward we go to DC. Starting us off here on page one, Batman 147, Zadarsky and Jimenez continuing their story with no allies, no weapons, and almost no hope. Can Batman fight back before Zur makes a true devil's bargain? The world is about to know Zur's true power. Him and his new sidekick? I'm intrigued. I'm always intrigued, but Batman I just started reading, um, I'm sorry, I mean to cut you off there. No, no, by all means, go right ahead. I just started reading, uh, the three-part Joker Year One mm-hmm. by Zdarsky. I'll talk about this more in the next comment, but the first issue was, was well done. Yeah, I'm looking forward yeah. to catching up on that as well. Page two here, a brand new Robin comic, uh, simply titled "The Boy Wonder," uh, by by Juni Ba, and art by Juni Ba. The young prince Damian Wayne was raised to be heir of the fearful, fearsome League of Assassins to follow in the footsteps of his deadly mother Talia and the demon's head himself, his grandfather Ra's al Ghul. But everything changed when his father, the Batman, reclaimed him, him and brought him back to Gotham City. Yes, that is indeed Damian's story. And uh, here we are uh, as uh, Damian continues to get some solo work in uh, as uh, Juni Ba makes his mark on the timeless story of Batman and Robin, synthesizing the character's complex history into an accessible and heart-rending fairy tale. Oh, that's that's a very compelling idea. Yeah. Also, that artwork is yeah. amazing. <laughs> really like that style choice there for, for a Robin comic in particular. I think it works really well. Yep. Hyper-animated going on. Page two. Batman. Brave and the Bold 13. Mm-hmm. Brave and the Bold 13. Tim Seeley, Mark Russell. Wow, look at this roll call. Yeah. Vlad Dawson, Joshua Hale, Filikoff. Wow. Yeah, they've been, so doing, they've been doing a good job with this. Uh, it's Nightwing and Dead Man. Excellent. And art by Kelly Jones. Ugh. Wow. Yep. And that's just one story. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Looks like uh, Mark Russell is also involved. He's probably writing the Booster Gold teams up with the Jurassic League story. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, th- th- this 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 has been a surprisingly enjoyable uh, series that they've been putting out here. You know, multiple stories to go with uh, with an issue, and uh, I'm always a fan of that. And glad that Brave and the Bold is back in one form or another here. Uh, give it to me. Give it to me, Levy. Give it to me. Keep, you keep scanning. There it is. There you go. Yep. Fallen Grayson, part one of five. And 
Our boy is back uh, on the interiors. Bruno Redondo working with Tom Taylor. This is one of the best creative teams in comics. Yep. And Bitewing is on the cover, so automatically I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, <laughs> notice, notice, Chris, we're finally at the climax of the Heartless story. Yeah, I see that in the, in the copy there. Yep. It's been a long time coming, and uh, this is going to be the Fallen Grayson five-issue storyline to wrap that up and move on from there. Page seven. Mm-hmm. Hopefully Tom I like Taylor the fa- will not go be ahead, moving on. I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying, hopefully Tom Taylor will not be moving on, but, you know, we should. Indeed. But I like the fact they've really played out the, I don't mean that negatively, that they've played out the Heartless storyline mm-hmm. through all, the, really the whole run, essentially, or, you know, the, it's it's really I'm really excited to see what's going to happen with that character. Yeah. It's a great, you know, really glad they've really delayed the payoff. Absolutely. Meanwhile, uh, the climax of year two of Poison Ivy. If you had told me two years ago, we'd be up to issue 22 in a Poison Ivy series. I probably wouldn't have believed you, but it's been nonstop action for by G. Will Wilson. Uh, over the past two years, and uh, I, if I remember correctly, it was originally just going to be a mini, but that's how, yeah. but that's how well it, it did, and now we're on the twenty second issue. Good stuff, page eight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gotta love that Harley Quinn cover, page nine. Slinging hot dogs. I just like I just like dogs and hot dogs. Well, yeah, exactly. Catwoman versus a cannibalistic cabal. On page 10, it's the final act of Nine Lives begins here by Teeny Howard. Ah. I know you're a big fan of this book. Big fan of both the books on the on the, on this page, yeah. page, page 11 here. Uh, Birds of Prey number nine, and then uh, almost a send up to Crisis on Outsiders number yeah. seven. <laughs> Not quite, but almost. We're, we're we're close. We've got a we've got sadness. We've got someone being held. We've got people on a on a ledge. Like it's mm-hmm. it's pretty damn close. And yeah. refer to the latest crisis tapes where Murd and Peter expertly break down mm-hmm. the classic issue seven cover that this cover is paying tribute yep. to. Yep. And Ian, I, I'm pretty sure Peter would uh, count this as an homage. <laughs> yep. I I, I I listened to that whole episode and uh, you know heard the criteria, and I think this this is pretty damn close to that criteria, right right here on page eleven. Yep. And they're not revealing who is in those arms, and it's title redacted on Outsiders number seven on page eleven. But yeah, on top of that uh, is indeed Birds of Prey number nine, Kelly Thompson, art by uh, various. Which means it'll have various artists uh, as the <laughs> as the birds search for Barbara Gordon. I got to mention, by the way, I, I've been reading Tom King and Ralph Torres' The Penguin. Mm-hmm. I've been reading the first six issues in one shot. Wow. Yeah. King just continues to fire on all thrusters. Again, he's he's like he's done with other characters. It's it's the Penguin you've always known, mm-hmm. but just so much more grounded in how disturbing he is and and how. Just sadistic and cruel and cl- clever. It's a really good book. Yep. Um, so, saw the trailer for the Max version of, of Penguin uh, a couple days ago, and looks like we might be getting a little bit closer to the Penguin that we that we may have wanted with that series. But obviously, we won't know until it's out. When is the release date for that? Uh, later, later this year. Uh, in fact, probably not okay. that far from now. To be entirely honest with you. All right. I'm looking forward to reading Batman Dark Age number one. Haven't picked that up yet. But. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Just hit stands today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That'll give you my my next shipment. And not just Batman, but Superman in this issue. And again, if anybody hasn't read Superman Space Age by the same team of Russell and Allred, please do yourself a favor and pick up that beautiful hardcover edition. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, truly, when we talk about what makes a great, you know, sort of Elseworld story, this is that that's right up there. Absolutely. Yep. Available for you on page 13. And then page 14. It is House of L versus House of Brainiac in Action Comics number 1065. Joshua Williamson, Rafa Sandoval, as Superman and Lobo have their hands full with Brainiac's Lobo army. Wow. (laughs) So it's up to Supergirl and Connor Kent to stop Brainiac himself. You got Connor, you got Lobo, 
It's like Young Justice all over again right here on page 14. <clears throat> and then Superman and Lobo fight in Superman number 14. The consistently excellent Joshua Williamson, Williamson held Superman comic. I, mm-hmm. I look forward to it every month. Yep. Part four of House of Brainiac, page 15. And then Power Girl number nine. Uh, they they may need to fix the color a little bit <laughs> uh, on on this because uh, well, yeah. it leads very it leads very little to the imagination. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think the lower half of her body needs to be a little more obviously you know, <laughs> wrapped in white fabric. You know, yes. Well, there's, there's, a, there's a couple, there's a couple, couple cre- cre- there's a couple creases there in the material. Yes, but. Still, maybe, yeah, maybe, he, maybe just change the, to, the, the shading a little bit. Come on, yeah, yeah, make it uh, look a little less like just flesh tone, you know? Yeah, yeah, but uh, a titillating image, most definitely, for Power Girl number mm-hmm. nine. Since I used that term earlier, I may as well say it again here. Uh, yeah, put on and some, you enjoy put, every opportunity you can to say that word, indeed, and put on some pants, will you? <laughs> Page 16. Solomon Grundy want pants too. <laughs> uh, Suicide Squad Dream Team number three. It's got Bizarro. That much we know. <laughs> and he seems to be saving people. And he's crying. Hmm. hmm. That mean him and happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, page 17 for issue three of that. And I am uh, very much looking forward to this. Wow. Wow. Man. Murd, by her way. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Page 18, we've got uh, part two of the, uh, I think the, the story is called Impossible or something like that. It, uh, Batman for Man, World's Finest, number 27 by Mark Wade and Dan Mora, and it involves imps. Yeah, we've got uh, Mrs. Pitlick and Batmite and what looks like a, a mite version of the entire Super Friends Legion of Doom and then some <laughs> the uh the, the watchtower the watchtower YouTube channel put out a, a, a excellent video on Mixiex Pitilek and whether or not it has been the same Mixiex Pitilek through each media version that we have gotten over the years whether or not it's the same character just showing up in different shows, but remembers everything from each previous version and, and all that jazz, uh, <clears throat> as is hinted at in the most recent Superman uh, uh, animated series that's that's out on Max. But uh, really, really well done. Uh, and I love that YouTube channel in general, so I'm glad that they covered Mixie. But yeah, page 18 for as many imps as you could fit into a comic book. Uh, uh, Chris, by uh, go ahead, go ahead. Kneel before Zod. Thank you. Page nineteen, issue five. You are not the president. <laughs> One who leads would never kneel so quickly. <laughs> oh wow! Look at that cover for the Flash number yeah. nine. Man, that's some good stuff right there. Simon Spurrier continuing his run with Ramon Perez, page twenty-one. And the fate of Hal Jordan and Carol Ferris in Green Lantern number 11 by Jeremy Adams and Zermanico. And Kevin McGuire as well. Wow, Shane. Yep. I believe uh, Mr. McGuire will be covering the Guy Gardner story. All right. Yep. Guy Gardner has caught his man, or has he? Page 22 for that one. Titans 11. Tom Taylor, Lucas Meyer. After a literal deal with the devil, Waller turns things up a notch. With the help of a twisted Dr. Morrow, she has now created an ultimate weapon capable of taking down all the Titans. Can the team survive themselves? Oh, boy. This series has been consistently outstanding, by the way. Mm -hmm. And as Ian has mentioned in the past... This is essentially the Justice League now of the DC Universe, yep. and these are iconic characters in their own right. And to see them elevated to this stature is, is really rewarding as a reader. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So it looks like the Titans have got their own version of Amazo to contend with here. Yes, they do. Yep. And uh, this time around, it's Lucas Meyer on the artwork chores uh, for this particular issue of Titans. <clears throat> issue 11, page 24. 
Shazam, issue 11. Josie Campbell and uh, Emanuela uh, Lupacino. As the Vasquezes have made the extraordinary decision to adopt the kids. All they have to do is pass a home inspection by the adoption agency. But ever since the gods rebuilt the family home, things have become a bit of a magical mess. <laughs> that may be a problem. Mm. Bit of a magical mess. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Page 25 for that. Ian, as we, as we just scroll past Blue Beetle, has there been any talk, because you always have your ear to the ground, mm -hmm. on them returning to that Blue Beetle movie verse, or is that you think that's finished? From what I've been hearing, uh, James yeah. Gunn does want to use the character. Um, oh, great. Okay. So wh whether or not we get another Blue Beetle movie we remains to be seen, but he could very well wind up showing up in James Gunn's DC universe in one form or another. That's, that's, that's good to know. Let's remember there's going to be a Booster Gold series, so that would certainly right. be a good place for him to show up, but you never you never know. Ah, uh, and Green Arrow number 12, the family reunion. For the last year, Oliver Queen has been on a mission to reunite his family and friends. Can the Emerald Archer overcome Merlin's final master move and get the family reunion we've all been dying to see. Joshua Williamson and Sean Isaac conclude their year-long story arc on Green Arrow. Whether the book continues after this, I'm not entirely sure, but it doesn't say anything about final issues, so maybe maybe we'll get lucky and we'll get an issue 13. Who knows? I'm definitely enjoying that cover. Yes. I would, I would pay to read a, read a book that's nothing but Oliver Queen traveling around the country, just firing arrows through smartphones wherever he comes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Murdonian justice. <laughs> Title it Android Quest. Yeah, that, 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 that'd that be that'd be great. And I, I, I'm really enjoying this uh, this image here for Suicide Squad Kill Arkham Asylum number five as well. Talking about Killer Shark. I appreciated that in Birds of Prey, we got a killer shark that was uh, much more similar in personality to the Birds of Prey animated series version of Killer Shark. Um, or, 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 sorry, King Shark. And I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I like him to have a personality and a bite. Ooh, great cover there for John Constantine Hellblazer, Dead in wow. the number five. Simon Spurrier and Aaron Campbell continuing their nine-issue miniseries on page 29. And Dan Jurgens uh, continuing uh, on the The Bat-Man first night story set with the original version of The Batman. Mm-hmm. Yep. We're talking the Purple Glove days way back ah. in 1939. Mm -hmm. So, like, stories of very early... It's like Earth 2 Batman year one, basically. Yep. Good way of putting that. Yep. Page thirty-one. This can, this is the third of three of these prestige format books. What's exciting about this concept is they're taking Batman really back to his noir roots. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's that's an exciting concept. Mm -hmm. Batman and Robin and Howard gets the, gets the third issue on page thirty-three. And this 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 has me intrigued. Jordi Belair is a terrific writer to begin with. Paulina. Uh, Ganushu uh, is is on the artwork chores for this. Wonder Woman, The Adventures of Young Diana. A nice all-ages uh, Wonder Woman book in soft cover. Only $17 for 192 pages. Not bad at all. And uh, you get some of the early days of Diana being being collected here. Um, mm. These these stories by Eyes, by Jordi Belair were, collect, uh, were released in the past, but now they're collected here in one form for the first time on page 34. And that artwork to go along with it is just what you want from an all-ages book. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Woo. Yep. Captivating and uh, has depth of color and character and personality. Wonderful. Ah... And then for the Crisisologists on page 36. Murd? Facsimile, facsimile, facsimile. 
Mm -hmm. They seem to be reprinting uh, the entirety of Crisis on Infinite Earths in facsimile form, issue by issue. Much as Marvel is doing with uh, their own Marvel superhero Secret Wars. That's right. Mm -hmm. Perhaps not coincidentally. But yeah, the first two issues can be found solicited on page 36. Yep. Excellent. This would be a great way to re-experience Crisis, actually. Oh, yeah. Going the monthly form. Mm Mm-hmm. And, and and you have all those those uh, all the advertisements and whatnot in the in in there as well, so yeah. And how about the, what's interesting? Go ahead, go ahead, Ian, please. Oh, I was just going to say, how about this military comics number one facsimile and and our army at war for that matter? I love that both companies, Marvel and DC, are recognizing that you know there's an audience of people like me who are at an age who would love to buy these because mm-hmm. you know once we're gone, I don't even want to. I'm going to want to buy the facsimiles like this, so these are really exciting. Oh, yeah. Yep. And that, that first one, the one and only Will Eisner, art and cover by by Chuck uh, Sedera, and uh, written by Bob. First appearance of, of – and then Army of War 81 is the first appearance of Sergeant Rock. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Indeed, by Bob Haney. Oh. Ross Andrew, Mike Esposito, great art team. Ugh. Andrew, one of the great Spider-Man artists. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Page 37. We get our first volume of Wonder Woman, uh, page 38. So anybody who's been waiting on Tom King and uh, Daniel Sampier's first volume, you get uh, one through six and a story from Wonder Woman number 800 available for you on page 38. And the first volume of uh, Cy Spurrier's Flash on the next page, page 39. And then you get the volume one of The Penguin. Ah, uh, splendid. Mm-hmm. Page 40. They're putting out a deluxe edition of Supergirl, The Woman of Tomorrow on page 41. So if you wanted it a nice, big, hardcover format, you now can do so. All Magnificent these- story. Oh, yeah. Yep. And th- this is supposed to be the basis of the film, correct? Yes, that that is yeah, correct. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Further along here, Absolute Mr. Miracle and Absolute Batman Death of the Family, page 43. Mr. Miracle very much deserves the the absolute treatment. Great artwork by Mr. Rod, Mr. Rods and, you know, Tom King writing himself a fantastic yarn. And Absolute Death of the Family, it's Snyder, it's Capullo, it's creepy. One of the creepiest jokers you have with that freaking missing face. <laughs> Page 43. Oh, wow. Look at this. Yeah. I know. I know. Batman that- and Robin Adventures based on the animated series. Yeah. Omnibus. Oh, fantastic. Page 43. Anyone who loves the animated series, these comics, I think, were very faithful to the look, style, and spirit of that series. And you had great creators working on this. Ty Templeton, Paul Dini, Hilary J. Uh, Bader, mm-hmm. uh, Kelly Puck. And of course, the art by Ty Templeton and Rich Burchett is right on the nose when it comes to the feel of the, the cartoons. What, great stuff. What I like about this is that this also includes the Batman Adventures, The Lost Years, number one, numbers one mm. through five, which tries to fill the gap between the, uh, the Fox show and the WB show. So mm. essentially explaining, you know, a little bit further how Dick Grayson stopped being uh, Robin, became Nightwing, and uh, Tim Drake gets introduced. Busiek's Superman by Kurt Busiek and Jeff, and Jeff Johns, art by Stuart Eminen, Pete Woods, Carlos Pacheco, and others. This was some really good Superman back mm. in the day. Um, and, uh, this is, uh, collecting Action Comics 837 to 843, Superman 650 to 658, uh, Man of Steel Annual Number 5, Superman Secret Identity 1 through 4, and World's Finest Comics 308 to 309 to flesh it out. Yep. Going way back for a couple of, uh, very early Dems from, uh, of music's career there. 308 to 309, that takes us back to the 80s. Yep. And of course, uh, Secret Identity number one through four is something of an Elseworlds uh, about uh, mm-hmm. you know, kind of an Earth Prime Superboy story. A young man who uh, discovered, who happens to be named Clark Kent in a world where superheroes don't exist except as comic book characters, but discovers that he just happens to have Superman's Kryptonian powers. <laughs> and uh, yeah, what, what direction his life takes from there. Good stuff. Page 45. 
Absolute Justice 2024 edition. Whenever this gets re-released, it's worth checking out if you have not already uh, read it. It's Jim Kruger, it's Alex Ross, Doug Braithwaite. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous book. And yeah, very, very few books have gotten the Justice League this right, honestly. Um, page, page 46. It, it's just, it's, it's, it's one of my favorites. It really is. Oh. Yep. JSA. The so Golden a Age. reissue of, for me, one of the great sort of DC retro stories, James Robinson and a favorite artist of mine going back to, you know, the X-Men is Paul Smith, uh, JSA, the golden age. So it, this is basically the JSA meets McCarthyism. Um, I, I think this story is a masterpiece. It, it, it's so well done. So it captures the, 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 the anxiety of that time period. Mm-hmm. And then, and then Ian just to tease me is now putting on the screen <laughs> Human Target Volume Two, which is the Tom King Greg Small one. And talk about again, I'm going to overuse it, but talk about a masterpiece. Mm-hmm. I've I've been blathering about this book on this show now for the past two years. Um, to me, this is the most most exciting comic comic book I've seen in, in years. Yep. Period. So all that on page forty seven, and that finishes out DC. Let's head over to Titan real quick for some of that uh, revealing stuff on page one thirty-eight. Gun Honey. I tried the I tried the first couple issues of Gun Honey. Yeah. Um, I, I found it to be mediocre. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that I I didn't stay with it, so maybe it maybe it, it went in a direction I would have enjoyed if I kept with it. But time and money, so no, fair mm. enough, fair enough. Yeah, read read read, read 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 what you like, you know. Yeah, yeah the, the art the art was was pretty engaging, but I thought the story was was kind of derivative. Fair enough. This is a new mini series in that collision course number one of four, as Joanna Tan returns for a new heart racing series after nearly a year in hiding from government agents looking to kill her. Gun Honey launches a plan to turn the tables that will take her from the jungles of Borneo to the streets of Yokohama and the sands of the Gobi Desert. When four armed gr- groups converge on one secret location, will anyone survive the explosive the explosive collision? Find that out <laughs> on page one thirty eight. Adam Hughes' cover is even more revealing, <laughs> but don't be surprised. Yeah. I think I saw a Sean Phillips cover back there too. Indeed, indeed, yeah. Savage Sword of Conan, the original comics omnibus, volume nine. Ah. Uh. I'm excited because I just picked stuff. up um, at my LCS because I'd missed it in my order. They just they're issuing a new magazine version of Savage Sword of Conan, mm-hmm. with, you know, a new number one, new great creators, and I've been raving about the Titans, you know, flagship Conan books. I'm really looking forward to reading this magazine version. Yep. Crom does not deny the faithful. Page 142 for that. Oh man. Oof. Now this this is I mean, Savage Sword of Conan was a we had a lot of great stories in it. Yep. And here's one of the best books in comics right now, Conan the Barbarian number 11. Mm-hmm. My nomination for best new series of the year. I like that Sean Galloway cover yeah. C there. <laughs> <laughs> Page 144. It's like, and now for something completely different. This sounds interesting. Rivers of London, Stray Cat Blues, number one of four. Hit comic based on Ben uh, Ar- Ar- Aaron... Aronovitz, there we go, best-selling novels returns here as old frenemies become allies in the latest Rivers of London saga where a mysterious Catwoman comes to Abigail looking for help to free her sisters from a notorious chimera brothel run by London gangster Monty and his sinister, magically endowed mother, Mrs. Napier. Page 145. Rivers of London novels have sold more than 5 million copies worldwide. How about that? Page 150. You gotta bring it up. I can count to 10. Flag. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Roman Dirge's triumphant return from the twisted imagination. The Michelangelo of the macabre comes this, his latest magnificent masterpiece. I can count to 10. The first non-children's book for adults. 
The Michelangelo the Macabre. I like that. <laughs> oh man. This this is like this is some Joan and Vasquez level little level craziness right here. <laughs> I'm I'm in. <laughs> Uh, what starts as the cutest counting book in the history of education soon descends spectacularly <laughs> into the single goriest, bloodiest, and funniest non-teaching aid ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Wow. Page one fifty. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've I've been keeping a collected edition of Jonan Vasquez's filler bunny in my glove compartment just for odd moments when I need something to read in the car, and mm -hmm. it seems like this is going to be in a similar vein. <laughs> <laughs> it, it 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 does indeed, and 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 when when you get a when you get a pull quote from Neil Gaiman saying "I love the way Roman Durs draws stuff," that's that's a <laughs> that that's a good pedigree right there. <laughs> Anything you can get Neil Gaiman to say about your book is going to be <laughs> is a feather in your cap. Absolutely the case. Yep. Page 151. It is indeed some insane stuff. Ah. Disenchantment Untold Tales, Volume 2. I've been uh, following Disenchantment on Netflix, and uh, this is the, uh, the comics... Uh, that sort of fill some in-between gaps of the story on page 154, volume two of that, also resolicited volume one. Hmm. You know, I've Hagar the never... Horrible. Oh, yeah. Apparently this is the 50th anniversary. Wow. You still you still never checked out this enchantment because it's on Netflix, I assume, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I would I'd still be interested in uh, reading these comics uh, just as soon as uh, Titan blesses us with a paperback edition. Fair enough. Fair enough. But yes, 50 years of Hagar the Horrible on page 156. Wow. And uh, 159, this is pretty awesome. Star Wars The Return of the Jedi 40th Anniversary Special. Mm. Yep. Deluxe Just Special a Edition. A little bit late for the actual 40th anniversary, of course, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bygones be bygones. You know, potato, potato. <laughs> Fudging the numbers a little bit. But yes, you're absolutely right. <laughs> it's an informative look at how Star Wars The Return of the Jedi came together from the conception of the story to the design and filming of the movie to the intensive post-production process full of outstanding, impactful photography and art chronicling the creation of the cinematic masterpiece. Page 159. And uh, this this I'll mention uh, again. It's manga before the manga section, but Titan always gives me something here. Villain actor, Volume One. Not only a great name, but uh, this is a pretty cool premise. Uh, I Ayumu Mashiro has given up on his dream of being a hero and settled down into the mundane life of a police officer until one day he transforms into the legendary villain known as Zero. Now a mysterious voice is guiding him as he's thrown into the battle between good and evil. Almost a Venom type situation here, I feel like. Mm, uh, yeah. With, with very much of a manga, manga bent to it. Fascinating indeed and great artwork to go along with it on page 160. By Makimo Sito and Kentaro Harada. And that is it for Titan... And onward we go to Marvel Baby. There's some Marvel. there's some exciting stuff in Marvel this month. Excellent. Not Blood Hunt. I'm not, I wasn't referring to Blood Hunt, but <laughs> how could you books. how could you have not been you know referring to Blood Hunt? Come on. Well, I'll, I'll say I'll say this. You know, I love the Dracula character as he's used in Marvel. Mm -hmm. So you know, whenever they bring in the vampiric characters, it's interesting to me. But I'm just I'm I'm an old man in the lawn on about crossover mm -hmm. events usually. Yeah. Yeah. Just. Pumping things up from, you know, like the four or five issue story arcs they probably should be into giant line wide crossovers with tie ins of the yin yang. Yep. <laughs> I will say the negative space ver uh, variant by John Tyler Christopher. That's a great cover. It's a great oh, cover. Blade, yeah. It's beautiful. Awesome. That's for Blood Hunt number one of five. That's uh, a very Bronze Age blade there. Yes, it is. Jed McKay and Pepe Larraz. Great, great, uh, great team behind it. Um, and, and, uh, Jed McKay's been, been spinning some yarns lately, especially over Moon Knight and what have you. So we'll see what he has to do here with more of the horror side of the Marvel universe on page two and then, uh, Blood Hunt number two on page four. 
and continued stuff like Dracula Blood Hunt 1 of 3 and Midnight Suns Blood Hunt 1 of 3 by Brian Hill and uh, Jermaine Peralta on page 7. <laughs> Union Jack the Ripper. That is well done. Well, well done. Well done. Uh, beautiful, beautiful job on that title right there, Marvel. It's <laughs> staring you right in the face and you did it. But uh, <laughs> Union Jack the Ripper, Blood Hunt, one of three, uh, Kevin Scott, artwork by Kev Walker to go along with it. Mm -hmm. That's fitting. Union Jack has had some doings with vampires in the past, after all. Mm -hmm. Oh, the classic Baron Blood story, one of my favorites from, the, from mm -hmm. Captain America. Yep, that is true. Yep. And uh, it wasn't uh, wasn't he also uh, God? What was the name of the of the of the series? I'm trying to think of, but uh, oh, uh, Captain Britain and MI13. Thank you. That's oh, I love one. that series. Yep. Ian, great yep. pick. Yep, there was a yep. big vampire storyline yes. involved in that series too. Absolutely, and Paul Cornell, Vampire State. Writing, I think they Vampire it. State. All that whole yep. series is superb. Mm -hmm. Let, let's look at this. Blood Hunters One of Four. Mark Russell, Christos Gage. And Erica Schultz on the writing. Do, do I see a, a moon pendant? Yes, you do. I think I see a moon pendant. <laughs> it's the moon moon. You got it. It's John Jameson, Man Wolf, Star God, call him what you will. He and his uh, his dad, Jay Jonah, have to fend off a horde of vampires. I see a man wolf. It's some sort of man wolf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Page, and, and mind you, you've got Cloak and Dagger involved in this too. Uh, Hawkeye on the run. This might be the one that I pick up of all the of all the miniseries, to be honest with you, because it's got some, some interesting storylines going on. The yeah, mad killer he way. saved me from was my son. <laughs> Sorry. Had a, had a uh, man. Is that the moment. power record you're quoting there? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what the sad, pathetic man. <laughs> what, what's, what's, what say you on black? No less so are the rest of us, Chris. Don't worry. <laughs> this is a brotherhood. Yep. Indeed. What say you on Black Panther Blood Hunt number one of three, Mr. Mr. I, I love the Black Panther, Panther but I'll be honest, I'm not going to read it. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> oh, look at the send up on Venom number 33. Yeah. Wow. Al Ewing writing. Yep. Going back to Craig. Man, this, there's, a lot of t there's a lot of tie ins for this. Holy mackerel. There sure as <laughs> heck are. Out the proverbial yin yang. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as Bird said. Page 11 for, for that one there. And even Avengers is tying in. Jed McKay and uh, C.F. Vila have a Blood Hunt tie-in and a new team lineup debuts on, on this one on page 13. And it looks like we get uh, Steve Rogers, Captain America, Hercules, Quicksilver in his green outfit. Ah. And uh, Kate Bishop, Hawkeye. Yep. And he's even bringing in Hazmat from Avengers Academy. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, Quicksilver is in that uniform, and Hercules are two of the mainstays of the classic late Silver Age Avengers team by Roy Thomas and John Buscema. Great mm -hmm. stuff. I, I like how McKay is essentially almost like almost like a tag team, like Scarlet Witch tags out and Quicksilver tags in. Uh, <laughs> so that's 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 pretty cool there, page page 13. All right, let's get past that. On oh, there's even some well, it's, Spider Man blood hunt. It's an excuse, but you got to bring Morbius into it. That makes sense. Well, yes, of course, of course. Uh, and uh, page seventeen has uh, uh, Zeb Wells and a returning John Romita Jr. to the blood hunt tie-in here. So yeah, you you bring Romita back, you let him draw Morbius a little bit. I'm I'm, I'm okay with this type of tie-in. That's that's perfectly yeah. fine. Ooh. Amazing Spider-Man number fifty. Look at the that goblin. Look at that Capullo cover. Yeah. Wowzers. Look at the Or Norman Osborn cover. Yes. Oh, or, I'm sorry. It's interior art. That yep. is who's the who's the pen star on this book? I'm sorry. So this this is going to be a bunch of people because this is the uh, the epic issue fifty. So it's going to be Ed McGinnis with Terry Dotson and more. That's a and Zeb Wells writing with Marv Wolfman. Yes. Yep. Oh, wow. Which makes me wonder if perhaps we're going to get some uh, some further old school Spider-Man mm. stories inside. But oh my god, that that cover there on page nineteen to go along with it. Fifty issues of the of the new run, nothing nothing to sneeze at, and yeah, this this looks like it's going to be a, a very very fascinating issue fifty as the Green Goblin returns for the first time in a while. 
as Norman shows his true color, green. But is it, is it truly that simple? Here we go. The Marv Wolfman uh, return uh, tells a story that will stay with you for a long time and more. That's all they say. I love the first issue of this. So issue four, Shuri yeah, Seizes the Throne uh, in Ultimate Black Panther number, uh, number 20. Glad you enjoyed it, Chris. I was, I was hoping yep. you would. Oh, this book is just wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. So goddamn good. Yep. Ultimate Spider-Man. It is just outstanding. I've read issues one and two. Uh, it's all the characters you love, but, you know, like any good Ultimate story, it's mm -hmm. a little different. Yep. And the fact that they have Ben and Jonah as n newspaper allies yeah. is such an interesting twist. It is. Um, you know, I love seeing, you know, a... Not middle aged, but older Spider Man with Mary Jane. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the first two issues. I, I was just this is when I, I was just like hooting and laughing with delight as I was reading the book. Yep. Is that good? Oh yeah, and, and look, look at that variant cover there by Leonardo Romero, by the way. Yep, uh, bringing old school with together with Ultimate. Page twenty one for that, and then twenty. That's a must for any Spider Man fan. Oh, a must. Yes, absolutely. And Maystorm is revealed in Ultimate X-Men on page 22, issue 3. Eh. David Michelini, Venom Separation Anxiety, 1 of 5. This is one of the Marvel that, retro picks. And what I like, if you, if you could scroll back to the full cover, mm -hmm. um, that's a, a tribute to a great Charles Vest cover. They mentioned him there back mm -hmm. in the 1980s era of Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Vest did some fantastic uh, painted covers and some Spider-Man books. He also penciled a wonderful graphic novel, I forgot the name of it, where Peter and Mary Jane go to Scotland. Ooh. And uh, they run to the Hellfire Club, but it's Vest art. It's beautiful. Nice. Well, this is this is uh, Michelini and uh, Gerardo Sandoval on the writing and art chores here. Five issue mini, page 23. And then talk about retro. <laughs> Deadpool and Wolverine, World War Three, number one of three. Variant cover by Rob Liefeld. Artwork on the inside by Adam Kubert. I wish they just put the Adam Kubert cover on here, quite <laughs> frankly, because look at this. I mean, yeah, my it's God. A great, great cover. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Yeah. yeah, and it's written by Joe Kelly, yeah. one of uh, the, the best Deadpool writers ever to be. Oh, yeah. I will be reading the heck out of this. This is, this is right up my alley absolutely page 24 for that and then if you want to see something chris will probably read the heck out of keep going to pages uh, 28 oh that's oh, oh, what i was excited about wow One, two things in Marvel is one. oh my god so it's jonathan hickman working with the great artist sanford green who we will know from bitter root and he did a wonderful run on a, a relaunch of power and iron fist some years back yep uh, Dr. Doom, number one. And the the premise of the story is Doom is teamed up with Valeria Richards, who essentially is his goddaughter, um, in order to, to finally try to bring Galactus down. Wow. Wow. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Oh. So Hickman, Green, Doom versus Galactus. Yeah. And it's a self-contained 56-page one-shot. Yep. Yeah, this is extremely exciting. Oh. I, I Look at that art. Oh. He's such a great artist. Oh. Oh, yeah, this is going to be really fun. And the award for best single issue of 2024 <laughs> goes to, yeah, that's... We'll see. That looks like, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's got a shot. It's already getting buzz, I hear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, while we get all this, that's page 30, page 31, page 32. Let's focus on something completely different, shall we? <laughs> Benjamin Percy... Julius Ota, Helverine, number one of four. Let's just, so this is Ghost Rider and Wolverine hybrid? I believe you are correct. Yeah. Yep. When a demonic force known as Bagra Ghoul first came to Earth, it brought Logan and Ghost Rider together to hunt it before it possessed Wolverine. But now in the present day, what event will put the Helverine back on the streets? And is he slashing his Hellfire claws for good or evil and introducing the all-new Hellfire Warriors? 
This is just stupid enough where I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you should team up with Spider Hulk. Could it be like the new Fantastic Four? Oh, that's right. Flaps Learned down into back. two. Ooh, can we can we also get that uh, that Wolverine uh, uh, Hulk hybrid thing going on? Like that? Uh, what was it like? Weapon thirteen or something like that? Oh, I don't remember. Oh my god! Just throw them all in there. Why the hell not? It's it's Benjamin Piercy, uh, and yeah, it it. it <laughs> It, it just looks like stupid fun. <laughs> Page thirty-two. Wow, look, look at the, uh, the the Mark Teixeira variant. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh man, Kevin Eastman has a variant. Mm. Damn, mm. And, but the Scotty Young one's the best. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of cool visuals to come out of this idea. We'll, we'll see what kind of story comes out of it. Yep. Oh, and here's something uh, less stupid on pages uh, 36 and 37. Oh, yeah. Chris, this is the other thing this, you're excited yes, about? Yes, immensely so. So Garth Ennis has told some outstanding Nick Fury stories. I always refer mm-hmm. back to the uh, miniseries Marvel did some years back, um, Nick Fury, My War Gone By, which is Fury in really essentially in, quote, the real world and his Cold War exploits in uh, then French Indochina, Vietnam, uh, the Central Central America. It, it, it's one of the greatest war comics I've read in recent years, and some of those stories involved Fury in Vietnam and meeting Frank Castle, and hmm. and Innes is referring returning to that theme because why wouldn't you? Yep. And the premise is that Fury, as a CIA asset, has been taken prisoner, and he just knows too much, so Castle sent in to assassinate him. Hmm. In right away. Oh yeah. And it's it's Innes working with this longtime. Co- uh, collaborator Jason Burroughs, they worked together. They worked together on numerous comics, including um, uh, what's the terrifying zombie comic Ian Ennis did originally? Oh man! Oh oh, uh, uh, damn! I I can't yeah, think, I can't I'm think failing right miserably. We'll 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 know soon enough because they yeah. they advertise it all the damn time in previews. You yeah. know, it, it yeah, never I can't. Comes out. I'm failing miserably. Yeah. But it's that creative team. They also did the great book 303, which is about a, a Russian veteran of Afghanistan. This is a, this is a, I'm really excited for this collaboration. Oh, crossed, crossed, crossed. Thank you. Yep, yep. crossed. Thank there you. Yep. Excellent. Oh wow. And and page 37. Oh. <laughs> uh, the send up to the Punisher. Uh, uh, yep. f- first first appearance. Yep. Beautiful. Now, and the hmm. senti. And Lee Ferguson bring us giant size X Men number one on page thirty eight. I know giant size X Men number one. <laughs> and this sir is no giant size X Men number wow. one. Wow, <laughs> going back to the eighties political history, merge. Oh man. Okay, fine. Yeah, but it's giant size X Men ish number one. It, yeah, it it is certainly ish. Yeah, and it's, I'm not saying it's not going to be a good story. I mean, it's Nascenti art by Lee Ferguson, and it's an untold tale of the Archangel. Uh, but that only takes up about half the 48 page page count, and the rest is just a reprint of Marvel Two in One number 68, featuring the Angel, the Thing, and Disco. Okay. Uh, wow. Sounds it's a story I'm going to enjoy. I'm sure. I, I know I have it at home, <sighs> like the original pub printing. But uh, it it just seems kind of it is dishonest yeah to just throw an entire like old random back issue of marvel two and one into the back pages of this to fill out the page count slap giant size x-men number one on the cover and crap it onto the stands they, they really should have just called it big size x-men uh like like don't don't put a giant on there i know it's the 50th anniversary of giant size but if you're gonna do that then give us something that's actually worth being a giant size like eh, well, yeah yeah Focus on one of the all new, all different X Men. At least this is mm-hmm. it, it's it's an Angel comic. Just call it yeah. Archangel or Giant Size Archangel or something. Just- yeah. And mind you, I'm sure that story will be fine because you know it's Andesanti and you know it's it's bound to be enjoyable. It's just it, I'm, it's just not just not worthy of the title. Yep. I and- read uh, the first issue of this Avengers Twilight by mm-hmm. Zdarsky and Daniel Kuna. Really good. Good to hear. Um, it, it's 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 again it's in, it's in the Else world. Uh, tradition, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's it's far, it's in the future, and it's it's a elderly Steve Rogers uh, trying to come to grips with with the world he's now living in, and and how he's sort of drawn back into uh, his adventures. The mm-hmm. first issue was drew me right in. So good to hear. 
I'm page, definitely going to finish the story. Page page 39 finishes that story, which means we'll have a trade forthcoming. Mm-hmm. Issue two of Deadpool's uh, new ongoing by Cody Ziggler on page 41. And I it's always, always good to see Taskmaster. I was going to say, I, and it's always good to see Deadpool and Taskmaster because they, yeah. they, they, they've had some good times over the years, especially when Gail Simone put them together uh, in, mm-hmm. uh, in the comics a long time ago. I'm looking forward to saying Gail Simone's name more often in the Marvel solicitations uh, come in another month or two or so. Mm-hmm. More on that later. Mm-hmm. Spectacular Spider-Men number three. Love is in the air at Empire State University Coffee Bean as Miles Morales and Kamala Khan get their first date alongside Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy? Hey, that's interesting. Indeed. What the what? <laughs> well, we'll so find... So the, the, the classic that groovy 1960s Peter and Gwen yep. relationship. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Perhaps some timey wimey business. We'll see. Quite possibly. Quite possibly. But Umberto Ramos joining Greg Weissman on this one, and I am very much anticipating that. By the way, I've been reading. I, I treated myself. I, I just picked up a recent Spider-Man epic collection, mm-hmm. which starts with the classic uh, Petrified Tablet Saga that we we did a, a spotlight on mm-hmm. a couple years ago with Dan Gavazdan, yep. and it goes all the way through. Uh, like close to issue 100, some of the best Spider-Man stories, issue for issue of all time. I'll nice. talk about it more next comic talk. So good. <laughs> Page 47, Miles Morales, Spider-Man number 20. First off, again, excellent cover. Uh, very the great job on that one in general. The the Federico uh, uh, the Vicente uh, cover there, uh, variant cover by Goran Pavlov. Uh, but Miles Morales faces his greatest challenge yet babysitting his little sister, Billy. <laughs> but wasn't he supposed to fight crime with Shift? Oh, and there was the thing with Ms. Marvel. Oh no, he forgot to call G- Genki back. And he's an hour late to meet Starling. Yeah, he's got a lot uh, spinning uh, at the same time. And uh, webs probably are not one of them. So do Sounds check like that out. like a typical day for a Spider-Man. Indeed. Page 47, Miles Morales, Spider-Man number 20. Spider-Boy number seven gets some Avengers action going on for it. Page 49. Yep. Guest starring uh, Thor, Cap, Squirrel Girl, and what looks like a tiny super adaptoid. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mert. Being billed as the toy soldier. Interesting. Huh. Okay. I can't Always wait. a great visual, the super adaptoid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to find out more about that. I'm totally out of it in this sense. Is Jackpot Mary Jane? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure. I just never read those stories. So. Well, they originally she wasn't, and then they realized how silly they were being. And uh, due to what's happened in Zeb Wells' uh, ongoing, mm. Mary Jane essentially developed a set of powers and is now running around as Jackpot again. So, uh, okay. Or for the first time, depending on how you look mm. at it. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Ah, and Edge of Spider-Verse number four features a very familiar looking Spider-Woman. Yes. So we get uh, our first comic book version of that uh, Spider-Woman from across the Spider-Verse on page 51. And on our next comic talk, I will discuss the uh, Spider-Verse short that came out on YouTube today. Oh, terrific. We can also discuss X-Men 97. Oh, we most definitely will, my friend. We most <laughs> definitely will. Especially. Oh, it's always there's always interesting when the X-Men have a wedding special. Mm-hmm. Yep. X-Men the wedding special number one, Mystique and Destiny finally tying the knot after all these years. And in this X-Men wedding special, I'll bet you the wedding actually happens. Yes. <laughs> I would certainly hope so. Yeah. Rather, uh, poor Logan. Oh, God. Poor and, and and poor everyone else who's tried to get married over the years. <laughs> Remember when it happened with uh, Co- Colossus and Kitty that one time, and that that Absolutely. never that never finished through. Yep. Oh boy. Issue fifty of Wolverine has a star-studded uh, group attached to it. Benjamin Ben Percy, uh, Victor Laval, Larry Hama returning to Wolverine. 
uh, along with uh, Corey Smith, Jeff Shaw, Javi Fernandez, uh, Dan- Danielle Picciotto, and more as a final showdown between Sabretooth and Wolverine happens on page 58 in issue 50. <laughs> Behold the Wolver armor. <laughs> <laughs> because if there's one thing a guy with an unbreakable adamantium skeleton and a healing factor really needs, it's a suit of armor. Yep. Behold a costume that will be unlockable in the Wolverine video game by Insomniac in a few years. <laughs> I guarantee you. Good point. Yep. Uh, and Fall of the House of X-Men, oh, House of X, that is, continues and concludes along with Rise of the Powers of X. This is all leading to the culmination of the Krakoa story. X-Men 34, The End of Not- End is Nigh, Jerry Duggan and Joshua Kassara on the writing and artwork chores for that. That's all on 60, 61, and 62. And soon we will be able to tell you more about the new X-Men books that will be coming very, very soon. Invincible Iron Man number 18, side by side with Magneto on page 63. And the. Oh, in the there you go, Ian. Yep. In the X Men 97 uh, uh, comic, Danger Ablaze. As uh, the X Men endangering not just our merry mutants, but any innocent civilians caught in the crossfire deal with powerful new foes descending upon them. Will humanity's improved opinion of mutants survive the chaos? And will one member of the team find herself pushed past her limits? Loving the focus on Sienna Blaze there. That is a very 90s character. Yes, mm. indeed. Yep. First three. Uh, I'm, I, I'm so looking forward to the first issue of Wolverine Madripoor Knights, uh, which I have not read yet. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's, it's Chris Claremont returning to his version of Wolverine as basically Humphrey Bogart. Mm-hmm. It's instead of Casablanca, it's Madripoor. So I'm really excited for this. Yep. And it looks like we have Captain America involved uh, in this particular issue as well. Well, it sounds like it's a callback to X-Men 268, which I just reread for some research I'm doing. Hmm. Hmm. Tease. Tease. Mm-hmm. New Mutants 98 facsimile edition. Speaking of Liefeld, page 69. I, I have. To, I usually don't do this, but because I, I haven't looked at this cover in a long time, what is going on with Deadpool's legs? Well, you see, they're too Holy long. Holy mackerel! They're they too go long. all the way up. <laughs> yes, they <laughs> oh do. My God, <laughs> he's all leg and no man. Holy <laughs> mackerel! Okay. Oh my God! Not to mention Domino and and the way she's sitting. Someone, there. someone was not attending John Romita's seniors classes at the, the, in this in the office this time. Nope. <laughs> How about? Uh, uh, yep. An era of Spider-Man I love, the DeFalco Friends uh, era, which had a lot of great Hobgoblin stories. Here we have the introduction of the Puma. Yes. So. And we're on issue five of Secret Wars. Uh, and- this, this is the fact I'm going to buy. Yep. So Avengers Annual 10, which is actually a really important comic in Marvel history. So you have two key events here. First, Well, first of all, it's Claremont, and the art is by Michael Golden. Mm-hmm. We talked about it like we did our Micro- Micronauts micro spotlight yep. in the not-too-distant past. Anytime his art shows up, stunning. But you have two key events here. So you have the incident where Rogue really inadvertently permanently takes Miss Marvel Carol Danvers' powers. Mm-hmm. And you then have the whole really horrific revelation of what the Avengers had done. With Carol Danvers oh, in Avengers in the, 200. In the yeah. very infamous Avengers 200, Ugh. which we talked about years ago in Avengers Spotlight. It is one of the most bizarre comics Marvel has ever published. Um, and Claremont does a, a, a really tries to address the plausible psychological consequences yes. of the decisions made in Avengers 200. Uh-huh. This is a gr- this is a great annual. I highly recommend it. And, and people wonder yeah. why Carol Danvers is a recovering alcoholic. Like yeah. – <laughs> With with some of the yeah. crap that she went through with the Avengers, my lord. Yeah, no, it's it's a, it's a great annual. I'll, I'll be picking this up. Yep, page seventy one for for that great uh, Thor cover on page uh, seventy two as well. Thor must die. Immortal, the Enchantress and Immortal Thor also <laughs> many a nomination along the way in our best ofs. Yeah, I got. I only read the first issue. I got to get the trade. 
All right. Captain America number nine, page 75. To stand against death. To JMS's scripts have been great. Mm -hmm. Good cap. Very good cap. Indeed. And Cap, Cap finds a misplaced penguin. I'm so con I'm so intrigued and confused. <laughs> yeah, the punchline is Hoboken. Oh, I'm dying. <laughs> Man, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> oh man. So Bugs Bunny reference, kids. Talk to your parents. <laughs> <laughs> Page 76, issue 5 of the conclusion of the return of Wheezy to Power Pack along with June Brigman. Uh, this, I'm looking forward to reading this all in one in one package. It's it's a return to form, to say the least. And God, those boots are so comforting. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And then Night Thrasher, for, for good measure, on the, on the same page, page 76. Fantastic Four covers continue to be the Ross's covers on Fantastic Four. <laughs> I mean, they're just breathtaking. Outstanding. God. Yep. Outstanding. Page 77. I, I haven't been reading this volume, so I can't comment on the stories, but the covers are just blow you away. Yep. And uh, Sensational uh, She-Hulk talk about good covers. Uh, that's the variant cover. Uh, let's, talk about, let's talk about great comics. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you you turned me on to this 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 title. I'm reading it in trade. I'm re looking forward to volume four coming out. On, I think in May, mm -hmm. but um, one of the best books Marvel's producing because it goes right to the essence of the character. Yep. Like sort of sort of the the whimsical nature of of her adventures. Mm -hmm. A lot of great callbacks and and sort of deep cuts of Marvel history. Wonderful book. And this this concludes the uh, the space epic that She Hulk and Jack of Hearts had been on. And your heart is not ready for this issue. Uh-oh. Yep. Meanwhile, the fourth and final issue of Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. Uh, and uh, hopefully there will be a return to the Scarlet Witch series following and this. And we've all praised Orlando's take on the character. Yes, indeed. Oh, yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. Ooh. A nominee for a sleeper hit of 2023. Yes, mm. indeed. Page 79. Talk, again, talk about striking covers. You've got that in spades for Incredible Hulk number 12. Wowzers. That is a lot going on there. Daredevil, John Romita Jr. Oh, good, to, cover. good to see a John Romita Jr. cover on Daredevil. Mm -hmm. Takes it back. Yep. And interior is by Juan Cabal. One of my... One you, of couldn't, my you couldn't wait to say that. Oh, of course. Of course. He just makes it easy. He makes it easy. Solid on Med continuing his Daredevil run there on page 80. The Aliens What If comic continues on page 83. And page 84, Star Wars Phantom Menace, 25th anniversary special. Oh, my God. It's been 25 years? Oh, my. Yes, it Wow, has. it has. Yep. God, that movie was awful. It <laughs> <laughs> uh, wasn't great, but there's it's got a whole generation of fans yeah, now, That's Chris. true. And to, be, and to be fair, like many people, when I, when I first saw it, I was so starved for a new Star Wars film that I convinced myself it was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, I watched I, it a few more times, and I, I said, wait. Oh no! There, no, there, there's. I, I saw it four times, and when I fell asleep in the theater on the fourth viewing, I think I realized there's certainly redeemable moments in it, uh, but not as a whole movie. Definitely not. Like you can pick it, you can pick and choose your your favorite scenes and just watch those as opposed to the entire film. Um, well, the the duel with Darth Maul is great. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But alas, they're, they're, they're chopping that up among th uh, three other plot lines going on simultaneously. Oh, yeah. Yep. And I uh, just diluted it. Yep. But uh, Greg Pak and Will Swiney return to the Phantom Menace era with this 25th anniversary story. Uh, I love Phil Noto art on Star Wars. Always. Oh, he oh, does great Star Wars art. Absolutely the case. Yep. We get Tusken Raiders here. We get a Gungan. We get some Jedi. We get Anakin. Everything you would want in a anniversary special. Scroll down a little bit more here. It's just the ongoing stuff for the most part. And on we go. Oh, to wait a minute. Phrases. Wait a minute. Yep. Mm -hmm. Let, let's let's pause. Yes. I never thought I'd see the day. Wow. Yes. So what we have here. Oh, this is this is marvelous. We have a omnibus. Godzilla, the original Marvel years. Wow. So this is this is reprinted in their black and white essential line some years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, but so Doug Monk, always a great writer, with the great Herb Trimpey, 
And there was this brief Bronze Age, like latter Bronze Age Godzilla series. I had a couple issues as a kid. And then they actually assimilate Godzilla into the Marvel Universe. Yes, they do. Because yep. he's been probably hunted by Dum Dum Dugan and Gabe from S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> these are a hoot and a half. Oh, my God. And if you're a Godzilla fan, you haven't read these. I, 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 they're really fun. Um, and, you know, it's... It's 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 very much in Marvel style. So, like there's a supporting cast for Godzilla, and you know it, it's it's just delightful. Murdy, anything you want to say about it? Oh yes, yes, absolutely. Because I, I I actually a few years ago hunted down all 24 issues because mm. I never thought a collection like this would exist, mm. and uh, I had a good time reading them. Yeah. I really did. It's uh, Godzilla versus well, I, I, well, as Chris said, Shield. Uh, they they invent the giant mecha Red Ronin that's to battle right. Godzilla. That that's popped up in different Marvel comics over the years. But mm-hmm. this is where Red Ronin began, and he fights against other monsters, including my favorite Yetragar, which is basically a <laughs> giant radioactive mutant Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> There's your '80s indie comic, Chris. Yes, nice. yes. Thank you, sir. My my yeah. fa- my, fa- I, my favorite I'm, part of the solicitation here, by the way, is mentioning that it's Spider-Man's most gratuitous guest shot ever. Oh, well, of course he appears. It's the 70s. <laughs> Wolverine's the go-to in the 90s. Yep. Spider-Man is the go-to in the 70s. Mm-hmm. That's right. Great cover here. Woo! Oh, my God. That is beautiful. Wow. <laughs> it looks like it's uh, based on a trimpy image, but enhanced by the art of uh, Jung Yoon Yoon. Yeah, nice. Gorgeous. Yep. So do check that out on page 92 and 93. And wait a minute. Yep. <sighs> Volume two of Micronauts. So volume one, I've actually ordered volume one. It's, I was waiting for it to arrive. But this is volume two. Again, of a, I, I, we told you a whole sp- micro spotlight on this. But for me, still one of the most exciting Marvel titles of the 19, late 70s and 80s. It's Bill Mantlo's World, Lock, Stock, and Barrel. Yep. Great stuff. Page 94 and uh, 95 has the cover. And that is very, very pretty stuff right there. And then uh, on oh. page 97, we get, uh, at speak, speaking of the DeFalco era, we get the, the yep. complete black costume saga on page 97. Yep. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Further now, this down. this is a great, I just want to mention, this is a great Captain America collection. Yep. This, this is a reissue. I already, I have this, but this is Omnibus Volume 2. And these are really outstanding, uh, like early Bronze Age Captain America, so you have some Lee colon, and then you transition into Lee working, and John Romita, I think, doing some of the most exciting work of his, like, his his early 70s period. Mm-hmm. He has a, a brief and really fun run on Captain America. Then, you, then you're going to move into, is, no, it's not Englehart yet, so we're not, we're not into the classic Secret Empire stories of the 70s, but, like, this is where Captain America becomes a police officer for a very brief period of time. You've got some great Red Skull stories, Hydra, uh, of course, the Falcon. And could you just scroll up? I want to see what the numbers are covered here. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, All right. So 114 the, to the 148. Fal- yep. So all the early Falcon appearances. I mean, Modoc. I mean, this is this is really good Captain America. Highest recommendation. That's all available there on page 100 for that. Ah, Marvel Studios Loki season two, the art of the series, page one. Yeah, I still have to finish that season. I I I would say finish it. I I I, yeah, I will. The, the the last episode in particular, I was I was a big fan of. Uh, All right, but I'm looking forward I, to it. I, I I'm glad that they put out these type of behind the scenes books just just for the for the behind the scenes artwork of it all because it does take a lot of process. Uh, page one hundred three. Uh, they're actually putting out a gallery edition of NYX, which uh, introduced X twenty three into the Marvel universe. And there's hints of a new NYX series that will be premiering soon uh, in one form or another, whether it's the same group of uh, mutants or not. Uh, I, I assume X-23 is going to be involved, but it'll probably be some other, you know, X-Men characters as well along with her. But uh, yeah, this this was this was some good stuff. It was Marjorie Liu and, and Joe Quesada uh, working on it along with Josh Middleton and uh, Sarah Pacelli and a couple of other artists along the way. Um collects NYX 1 through 7, and then the follow-up NYX No Way Home 1 through 6 on page 103. And then a bunch of the Star Wars High Republic stuff being collected in trade paperback on uh, on page 104. So Star uh, Marvel going back and uh, printing a bunch of the stuff that had been out of print for a little while, getting it back in print. 
And I think that's about it, unless they have any uh, epic collections on the bottom here. Let's see. Oh, which they will. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, we got some... Ah. Uh, I mean, you have the Winter Soldier, which well, is... Yes. I mean... <laughs> yeah. You can get that... Talk about Masterpiece. You can get that 800 different ways, quite frankly. But yes. This, this, is, this, this, is the, this is the epic collection version of it on page 121. So, yeah, that, that includes 1 through 17 of Cap, of the two, 2004 Captain America, uh, the number one director's cut, and the Captain America 65th anniversary special. And and this is the, the I think it's fair to say, legendary Brubaker Epting run on the character. Absolutely. And the, the epic collections, I, I, I like buying them. I think they're a good bang for your buck. You mm-hmm. get color... You get a lot of issues, yep. nice page quality, like paper quality. These are good books. Mm-hmm. And then you get some Defenders action on the, on the next page, page 122. Ah, those wacky Defenders. Yep. Mm, right. The beginning of these Steve Gerber written stories. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which gives us uh, the Headmen, the Sons of the Serpent, and the first appearance of the Wreckers Wrecking Crew. Ah, ah nice. Plus some uh, Brotherhood, of, is that some Brotherhood of Evil Mutants I see with Blob and Magneto like and whatnot? And Eunice, and Eunice, Eunice the, the Untouchable. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Nice. Ah, and 125, X-Men the Animated Series Feared and Hated Graphic Novel. Now, this is including uh, X-Men Adventures 1 through 8. So it's just a small trade paperback, uh, but Ralph Macchio was the writer behind it. Andrew Wildman and Chris Batista in his earliest, uh, some of his earliest stuff for Marvel uh, included in there as well. Um, and this was, you know, stories set in the animated series universe uh, back in the uh, in the early 90s. So, yeah, uh, this was this was high quality uh, animated series uh, comic books back then. And you can read them now in collection on page 125. And that concludes the Marvel Catalog. On where we go to the not Marvel Catalog and everything else. Um, I'll I'll mention in passing 166 here. We know Aftershock is mostly in the Trey paperback business at this point. But I will bring up uh, Captain Kid Volume 1 that Mark Wade and Tom Pyre did. Uh, that's being uh, resolicited here. Uh, this collects all f- uh, five issues of that as uh, a middle-aged man suddenly transforms himself into a teenage superhero. So it's very much the reverse of Captain Marvel. Um, and it's and it's Mark Wade who is writing Shazam. And so Tom Captain Pyre, Marvel too. And Tom Pyre. Wow. So oh, yeah. definitely worth checking out on page 166. I own a version of that trade paperback already. Good, 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 good pick, Levy Poo. Good pick. Thank you. Uh, Marshall Boss, Volume 1, page 168, a name that I have not heard in quite some time, Igor Cordy, on the artwork chores for this, and Darko McCann on the writing. Uh, Darko e- McCann, Ma- Ma- McCann is an outstanding writer. If I remember correctly, he did some great Grendel work, hmm. I think, years ago that I just I blew my socks off. Okay. So. Yep, and, Cor- and Cordy... Uh, he gets a bad rap for the the new X Men stuff that he quite literally filled in last minute on, but uh, the the cable stuff that he did, I was a huge fan of both both uh, the cable and Soldier X stuff that he worked on back in the day. So this is going to be some Wild West action here. Uh, Marshall Bass on page one sixty eight, an African American uh, U.S. Marshal. Mm-hmm. Indeed. And the artwork looks great, honestly. We'll, we'll sure does. It. Wow. Yep. Actually, yep. go back there for a second, Ian. It almost it has a bit of like a heavy metal magazine feel to it. That's that's a good. I call. I like this art. Yeah, quite a bit. Yep. Very very good call on that. Thanks, honey. Immortal Regis, Omnibus Volume Three, One Seventy One. So if you've been checking that out, now you get some even more of that. The third volume. Let's scroll down a bit more into the rest of what's being offered here and start off with I Lie Popeye, page 182. Yep. Yeah. A Dragon Ball Z approach to Popeye. Enough said. Exactly. Yep. I I am all about this. <laughs> Mark Marcus Williams bringing Popeye back into uh, into the comics after quite some time, and, and yes, you're right. That's definitely what he's going for here is a little bit more of a manga esque feel to Popeye, and mm-hmm. the artwork looks great. 
Uh, it's 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 unique and new and invigorating. Uh, any I think any fan of Popeye would probably enjoy this. Just even looking at it mm-hmm. here. Yep, the artwork looks fantastic. I'll agree. Yeah. Uh, what little I can see of the dialogue d- doesn't exactly seem like a good fit for the character as we know it. Mm. But uh, just uh, I'll just squint and enjoy the pictures. Fair. I'm definitely going to order the first issue, notwithstanding. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, that's 182 there, and yes, I've I, I've been. Uh, it's even a little bit of One Piece there with the uh, the wind up and the, the point. Yeah, oh, good sure, point. yeah. Yep, absolutely. Maybe Popeye is eating some gum gum fruit along with his. <laughs> <laughs> Quite possibly. All right, on we go. A little bit further on into the catalog to Archie Comics Judgment Day number one of three. Aubrey Sitterson on the mm-hmm. scripting chores here and Megan Hutchinson on the artwork. In a world over. Boy, life, got, of- life got a lot darker than just deciding between Betty and Veronica. My I, God. I know, right? <laughs> Definitely. This, this is way more into like the Sabrina end of, yeah. of, of Archie, to say the least. Yeah. Yep. This is one of the descendants of Afterlife with Archie. Which was a damn good book. I really it enjoyed was. Afterlife with Archie. Mm-hmm. Really yep. good. Yep. In a world overrun with demons, Archie Andrews is on a quest to cleanse Riverdale of all wicked kind. Harnessing the destructive power of a captive f- f- fiend, he will have to destroy corrupted and possessed versions of the people closest to him. So yes, very Afterlife with Archie. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it's like supernatural uh like threw up all over this to say the least <laughs> page 192 for that great francesco uh, frank avia oh i love oh, his work man. yep and of course he was the penciler in afterlife with archie correct mm-hmm. yep yes right? he yeah. was which right. sadly was one of the reasons why the series petered out because mm-hmm. francesco couldn't keep up with the deadline. It, 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 yeah. it didn't formally end did it if i remember i don't that think correctly? it ever did yeah i think okay. you're right chris oh wow look at that artwork on 196 yeah oh that's great sure is man and then of course for something completely different <laughs> betty and veronica <laughs> friends forever fairy tales os 198 you want your classic Archie? You got your classic Archie. Yeah. <laughs> There's uh, Jughead eating a submarine sandwich. <laughs> yes, indeed. All right. Uh, Anansi Boys. Dark Horse. Neil Gaiman, uh, Mark uh, Bernardin, and Sean Martinborough. Uh, Sean Martinborough is a wonderful penciler. Yeah. Wonderful. And this is this is Anansi Boys uh, in comic book form, essentially, taking the Anansi Boys story that Neil Gaiman worked on and, uh, and adapting it uh, for the comic book uh, page on page 205. I first uh, experienced uh, Sean Martinborough's art. He had a great run of Detective Comics years ago that really was emphasized uh, – Raz al Ghul, Ty al Ghul, great mm. stuff. And then, but what he's really noted for, he was the co-creator of the great image series, Thief of Thieves. Ah. Which is an outstanding heist type title. Nice. Mm. I highly recommend Thief of Thieves. Really smart uh, heist stories and like a master thief and, you know, how his professional personal lives, you know, c- collide. It's really well done. Mm. Didn't Nick Spencer write that one? I want to say yes. I think Kirkman was involved in his creation. Okay. But I want to say there might have been multiple. I'm not sure. There might have been different scripters, but it was – I'm misremembering here, but really good book consistently. You said it's called Thick of Thieves? Uh, Thief, of Thief, 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 Thief of Thieves. Thief of Thieves. Thank you. Thief of Thieves. There we are. Uh, and, of course, there's also a video game called that. But let's see. Mm-hmm. Comic book. There we go. And – Looking at the first issue here on Images site, of course it's eluding me, but here we are. Okay, I'll go to page. I'll go to issue forty-three, and it'll tell me. Uh, well, Brett, well, Brett Lewis was writing it at that point, uh, mm. but yeah, I'll I'll look further into actually. That's okay. Created, it's created. it's just I, I read almost the whole series. It's consistently outstanding. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's you really, know what's really smart? It was James Ausmus. That's who. That's who co-wrote it along with Robert Kirkman. Uh, uh, thief okay. Oh. Yep. Thank you. Yep. It's good stuff. Ausmus is very much a Spencer-like creator, mm. so I can understand the uh, the confusion there. Um, Anansi Boys, by the way, uh, as it, as pointed out in the solicitation, I forgot, soon to be a Amazon Prime uh, TV series. 
Uh, Beyond the Pale, number one, also on this page 205. Uh, Christopher er uh, Emgard and uh, Tomas uh, Aira, as war correspondent uh, Hedda Sawyer, is looking into the disproportional loss of black soldiers in the Vietnam War. Leads say losses are especially high at Firebase to Tartarus, with most of them simply gone missing. Their fate unknown. Something sinister is I like this. A, a Vietnam Tartarus. War horror story. Yeah. That's... You don't see that every day, just like it is. No. Yep. And there's that first issue, once again, available on page 205. So in the next comic talk, mm -hmm. I'll give my opinion on the newest Ghostbusters film. Okay. I, I'm I figured you've seen it as well, Ian. I have not seen it yet. I, I was I was okay. going to see it, and we had to cancel our tickets. So um, hopefully we'll have seen it by the time we do our next comic talk. Uh, take your time. I will see it. <laughs> I will see it nonetheless. But yeah, yes, I, we'll discuss. Mind you, I still haven't even seen Dune yet, and I want to. And I, and I want to go oh, see that. Dune, Dune is Dune is why you go to the movies. Yeah. Okay, I'll talk about that as well. Excellent. All right, page 207 has two number ones of note here. Uh, Into the Unbeing, part one, by Zach Thompson and Hayden Sherman, a group of climate scientists working in a remote base camp in the Australian outback discover an impossible landform. They venture inside, expecting the unexpected, and the titular Unbeing delivers. Certainly horror, to say the least, here. By, by Zach Thompson. And then directly underneath that, we get the first issue of Joy Operations 2 by Mr. Brian Michael Bendis with uh, Stephen Byrne on the artwork chores. Page 207. I haven't read New Bendis in a while. Now's your chance. <laughs> Thank you, 1940s radio reporter. <laughs> You're welcome. Anytime. Uh, new Resident Alien book uh, coming out by, uh, by Peter Hogan. Uh, Resident Alien, the successful sci-fi uh, uh, TV series, but it was a comic book first, and uh, the Book of Life, number one, continues that comic book on page 209. And uh, Star Wars hyperspace stories, Qui-Gon, trade paperback, also solicited here, George Mann and Andrea Moody on the artwork chores for that. Oh, great artist. Yeah, Ooh. good pedigree. Uh very interested in on page 210 in The Writer. In a dark turn, comic book writer Stan Siegel's life dives into a neo-Nazi occult nightmare orchestrated by legendary Josh Gad. That, yeah, the, yes, that Josh Gad. And the Berkowitz And it certainly looks like him on the cover. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. The writer plunges Stan into a whirl of Jewish folklore and magic. Amid demonic chaos and high-speed chases, Stan's hunger for answers unveils hidden identities, setting off a desperate race against time in this thrilling saga. Yeah, I'm 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 way in on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Not only am I a Josh Gad fan, uh, but uh, I'm also a fan of uh, things involving Jewish writers. So nicely mm -hmm. done. So Black Hammer: The End. Mm -hmm. uh, I have the issues. I, I'm, I'm, I read one. And I, I kind of fell down. So I can read them all in one shot. But I hadn't read a Black Hammer's original story in a while, and boy, they, they haven't missed a beat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Still, some of the, the, the best superhero comics out there. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. Plus, uh, the artwork is by Malachi Ward, who's a CGS listener, a very nice guy, and mm -hmm. super duper talented. Yes, excellent. All available for you on page two eleven. And onward we go to IDW, and speaking of Godzilla, Godzilla's 70th anniversary special. Mm -hmm. Writing and artwork by my favorite people, Various. <laughs> <laughs> well, for example, uh, Joel Jones, yep. Michael Conrad, Matt Frank, James Stokoe, and Adam Gorham. Oh, and Dan DiDio gets in on it. Okay. At, oh. We got a Gotti sighting. Oh, yay! <laughs> Chris's beloved childhood toy, Gotti Godzilla, is on screen right now. Of course. And he's 
His black fired audio. tongue is is mm -hmm. immolating murder in as we speak. Oh, <laughs> let's 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 also remember that you know you you never have to wonder about how long it'll take you to achieve your goals in life because it took Godzilla seventy years to get an Academy Award, and he's That's right. Godzilla <laughs> is officially an Academy Award winning monster. Mm. I loved when uh, the whole special effects crew went up on stage with their little Godzilla models. Oh, so good. At least one of which was wearing a bow tie, if you looked carefully. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, that was a great moment. Nice. I came in third in my Oscar pool. I tied for first and then lost in the trivia. So it was a good night. It was a good night. Speaking of, of Josh Trujillo, by the way, he's got Godzilla rivals Mothra versus Hedorah on that same page 213. Yep, I like those Godzilla Rivals one shots. Yes, indeed. And issue two of Godzilla versus Mighty Morphin Power Rangers two, because it deserved a second miniseries. Damn it! Helen Bunn on the writing chores. Yes, indeed. Yep. So, how do you feel about My Little Pony Classics Reimagined? Murd. Murd. Uh, uh, oh, I see. I see. It's it's uh, My Little Pony doing Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jeremy Whitley on the writing chores, so it's yeah, so yep. probably well written. Just not your my, not your My Little Pony. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be that kind of grumpy family. I know. But, I know. Uh, I know. It's, it's it's not My Wizard of Oz either. Just for the record, but that is very true. Yep. I, I do not begrudge its existence. Mm -hmm. So More Star Trek Twenty again, Kelly and Lansing just producing outstanding Star Trek yarns. Yes. I praise the IDW books enough. On that same page, Vita Ayala and and a bunch of others, uh, including Max Visaggio, Steve Orlando, and more, uh, coming together for Star Trek celebrations. Star Trek was an attempt to say that humanity will reach maturity and wisdom on the day that it begins, not just to tolerate, but to celebrate differences in ideas and differences in life forms. That's a quote by the one and only Gene Roddenberry. And uh, this is a uh, LGBTQIA plus uh, one shot from a bunch of different creators coming together uh, to spin their Star Trek uh, yarns. And uh, looking forward to that on page 215. Like a poor marksman, you keep missing the target. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Oh, no, no, no. Please, 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 by all means, <laughs> indulge. Ah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Best of Slash, page 216. <laughs> yes, <laughs> slash, the sure. <laughs> slash the turtle, man. That's that, that that's what we're talking about. <laughs> he wants his binky. He does. He does want his binky. <laughs> page 216. All right. And uh, the, the Jenica uh, Fifth Turtle tray paperback. Also available on page 218 for something a little bit more and, serious on the turtle's end. And look below that. The EC covers artisan edition. Mm. Wow. So you've got classic covers from Wally Wood, Harvey Kurtzman, Graham Ingalls, Al Williamson. Oh, this is a roll call. Glory. Johnny Craig, Frank yep. Rosetta, Jack Davis, Al Feldstein. Woo. Yeah. Wow. That That is a hell of an artisan edition right there. 40 bucks. Yep. Not to mention Corgi the Complete Tales directly next to that by Christian Slade. It's uh, Adventures of a Man and His Giant Corgi. <laughs> if we could rewind just for a second to the top of page 217, of there's course. one more uh, Turtles project that I think is worth mentioning. Mm. Um, in the uh, Another entry in the black, white, and third color genre of, uh, of auteur comics. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, black, white, and green, number one. Nice. There on the left. Uh, that's written by Paulina Ganusho and Various with art by Declan Shalvey. Ooh, beautiful. Excellent. Yeah. If anything's deserving of a, uh, of a third color choice of green, it is most definitely the turtles. You said it. <clears throat> All right. Let's scroll down a little bit more as Jody Hauser uh, brings us a new Faith series, Faith Returns, uh, along with uh, Aleta v uh, Vidal. Uh, and most importantly, it's actually for a decent price. 
out of mm-hmm. out, out of Valiant. It's it's only five dollars for thirty two pages, which is the best we could possibly ask for from Alien Books slash Valiant at this point. So I'm all for yeah. that. Is there, is their price point that high in these days? Yes, yes, um, it is. Yeah. Yeah, the first couple of months worth of Valiant releases under Alien Books were way up there. Are we talking like six ninety nine or yes, oh, or worse? Wow, yeah, mm-hmm. Oof, okay, yeah. Uh, trying uh, to recoup uh, the cost of buying the Valiant line a little too quickly, but uh, mm-hmm. they they seem to have stabilized their their, their cover prices now. From, from from what I heard, Alien Books had a uh, 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 a influx of money from a backer at some point, and I think this may have actually probably assisted their price point going down a little bit more because um, we because we also get a new Ray miniseries by Dan Abnett starting out here. Uh, miniseries as in two issues, but uh, Dan Abnett and Emilio uh, Ortrera, uh putting out a new Ray series on page two twenty five. And then Exo Man of War follows that with a four issue mini on um, 226. Beautiful cover. Mm-hmm. Michael Double W. Conrad on the writing chores for that, too. I've never read a Bloodshot comic in my life. I can't, I can't comment on it. Well, <laughs> it's, it's been around a long time, but I've just never read it. This is this is the early stuff, too. This is, yeah, uh, I see that. Yeah, Bloodshot Zero through Seven, Eternal Warriors Number Five, and Hardcore. H A R D with periods in between number five and Ray number zero uh, by Bob Layton, uh, Kevin Van Hook, and uh, David Michelini. Uh, you know, uh, just you know what? Just hearing you pronounce the word hardcore with such emphasis and zeal, <laughs> just I feel even better now. Uh, I try, I try. Two twenty-seven for that. Uh, How about the? Uh, Ro- Robonic Stooges Saturday Morning Cartoon <laughs> Number One, <laughs> page two thirty three. Uh, I have actually bought a couple of Robonic Stooges comics from American Mythology. Nice. Outstanding. A couple of months ago, or well, sometime last year, they put out a like a, a spoof of the Infinity Gauntlet called uh, Robonic Stooges: The Imbecility Gauntlet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, I remember that being solicited. Yeah. Yep. Couldn't resist. <laughs> Uh, well, this is the Saturday morning cartoon version of said Robotic Stooges on page 233, if you want to check that out. And here's I all, noticed that here's Mike, all here. Sorry, quick question. I, I noticed that Michael Turner, mm-hmm. his name is still out there. So is, yes. is there, I'm, I'm ignorant. Is there like a group that is either reproducing his work or doing work in the spirit of his style and characters there. I, I mean, they're still, they're still making stuff out of, out of avatar and they're going to, they're going to use his name as long as they can possibly use it essentially. Gotcha. Um, so I think like th- th- they've been recycling the same Michael Turner covers as variants okay. over and over and over again for stuff like sigil and what have you. Um, so yeah, as long as those, properties are still out then his name will still be mentioned okay by the way um there's a mark russell graphic novel that you just look that looks really interesting uh w- what page was that uh keep keep going keep advancing it's after crossed oh after crossed got it okay. yeah i'm sorry yeah no worries um oh here we are yes uh yeah d- death ratio it's actually a one shot uh by mark russell and Lacey. yep interesting yeah futuristic dark comedy uh by by mark russell Life and death are ruled by social media. One too many dislikes and you're dead. Well, we may be not not too far away from that reality. (laughs) Oh, Oh my God. (sighs) Public stage, 248. Uh, Like me, like me. Please like me. All right. Look look at that. Wait, wait. Look at that. I'm sorry. Go back to that variant cover B. Murray, look at that poster. That is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I I was just noticing that, too. (laughs) Wow. That is 70s sci-fi. Great or like great 70s paranoia films. That's cool. And checking out that interior artwork. Look at look at the backgrounds. My God, that is gorgeous. That's impressive. Yep. Uh, speaking of Mr. Ennis, uh, the ribbon. Yeah, this is, I'm glad you stopped on this because I, this is a rare occasion where I missed a Garth Ennis book. Mm. I got my hands on issue one, I think, but then I just, for whatever reason, so I'm definitely going to order this because the first issue was really interesting. Yep. Um, it's, it's in this, unless the first issue come by like police procedural with the supernatural. So that's enough. Jason Burroughs again on penciling art. Yeah, indeed. And uh, that's the full story for you there on page 252. And the artwork is 
something else. <laughs> <laughs> no one does creepy like Burroughs. It's, oh, it's good stuff. Yep. I'm going to uh, stop it here on 254 also for Coins of Judas, the Gambler. Love the name. Had to give it a shot. Travis Gibb and Rolandis Kaunins. Uh, God bless America. Sophia and Gunther continue their search for the Coins of Judas. The Westergaard family travels to the United States to learn the secrets of the Gambler, an old legend of the Navajo. A, mis- a mystery man in possession of a coin takes control of a small town, forcing its inhabitants to do his bidding. Is this one of the mysterious coins of Judas? Kind of like a interesting concept. Yeah, kind of like an Indiana Jones type experience there on page two fifty four. Gentlemen, last I have to depart in a few minutes. By the way, yep, not not a, no worries on that. Uh, the, the the pressing dawn. Ah, yes, it was in, the, in my peripheral vision. How about how about deliver us from evil right here uh, with? Uh, I thought you were going to say deliver deliver me from my job. For a second. <laughs> also been great. For I mean, you know, well that too. <laughs> if only. Come on, man, you got spring break coming. Don't worry about it. I do. I do. Tomorrow's my last day. Thank the stars. Two fifty eight. Deliver us from evil. Uh, Peter Bro and uh, Matea Dorgini. Uh, a betrayal as old as time itself. Only in the future can you save the past. When the bad luck magic of Hellblazer blend with the conspiracies of the X-Files, who will deliver us from evil? Fascinating uh, uh, yeah. combination there. Sure is. Yep. And uh, the covers caught my eye as well. So if you're into that sort of uh, hullabaloo, you can check that out on page 258. And H.P. Lovecraft, Call of Cthulhu. Always got to call out a Cthulhu. Oh, sure. And Trey Baldwin uh, gives you the artwork uh, along with this as we get some uh, full-color comic book uh, adaptation of Call of Cthulhu on page 263. Shockingly mature themes, uh, but <laughs> I, 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 they had to make sure to point that out. And to the left of that, just because I've, I've never read Tarot, Witch the Black Rose, but you uh-huh. got to give it to Jim Ballant. He is still producing Yep, that book. Wow. Yeah, 130 issues of that. Yeah. Wow. And uh, Bone Volume 1 uh, Color Edition, as well as Volume 2, 3, so and Bone Adventures Volume 1 as these, well. The years I had the shop, these were always great sellers. Oh, yeah. Um, definitely could have put in the hands of parents or kids. They didn't want to buy the whole one volume. They could start with this. Coloring's wonderful, great editions. Definitely. Page 264 for anybody interested. Oh, in Classics Illustrated. Oh. <laughs> God, I love reading those reprints when I was a kid. Cyrano de Bergerac, available on page 265, along with uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin and the Moonstone. Hmm. The Moonstone, wow. Yep. Oh, Kniff. Kniff! <laughs> Kniff! Terror and the Pirates. So if you want to, you know, read... Such an essential, one of the great early comic strips that had a massive influence on a whole host of artists, especially John Romita Sr. I think he, he noted Kenneth as, I think, perhaps his greatest influence. Mm. Uh, really important work in sort of the, the overall history of, you know, the comic medium. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the Library of American Comics brings that to you on page 267. Moomin Adventures, book one, 270. Had to point that one out. Lars Jansen on the artwork, uh, Tove Jansen on the writing, and uh, an all-new softcover format collects the all-ages comic of both uh, Tove Jansen and Lars Jansen. The five-volume Moomin Adventures series will introduce the timeless comic strip to a new generation of readers of all ages. It is adorable. It is for everybody. Moomin Adventures. We could always use more comics for kids. You better believe it. Page 270 for that. And that aspiring note, gentlemen, I apologize. I must depart. All good, sir. All good. Thank you for joining us Uh, as long as you could. Oh, of course. Gentlemen, look for an email for me as an update about some work I'm doing for the show. Fantastic. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right, brothers. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Good night, Paul. Good night. Good night, sir. All right. Excellent. And... We shall continue to soldier on and uh, finish this sucker out. Jamie McKelvey has his first 
solo creator owned project in over a decade. One for Sorrow, number one, page 282. I could not possibly be more in on this one. Set in London in 1900, the capital hums with the energy of the new era, but something darker lurks beneath the surface. A monstrous figure stalks the city's criminal underworld at night, leaving a trail of bloody corpses in its wake. Rumors about the mysterious killer spread like wildfire. It's a demon, a phantom, an angel of vengeance. Nothing can kill it, nothing can stop it. And once it picks a new target, well, he better have a coffin picked out, because he's already dead. Mm. All right. Creepy, creepy, creepy. And it's Jamie McKelvey. The artwork is... Mm stupendous already just even from this one image cover wise yeah this this is going to be some really really good stuff here on page 282 mm -hmm. yep it's a turn of the century jack the ripper tale basically and if mckelvey's drawing it it's going to be some yes indeed and uh, they, they've got a couple of uh, character sketches on 288 and 289 to go along with it to further prove that to everybody all right, uh, let's head down to uh, Kiem, our journey through the motherlands. When a Marvel and image artist and his sister explore their family history. Fascinating. Yasmin Morissette fan and, and Debril Morissette fam. Uh, all their lives, Yasmin and, and Debril Morissette fan have heard of their mother's old country, Vietnam, but it was more a far distant land with lots of folklore than a real place in their minds. So they went on a journey to uncover their past from Vietnam to California. A dramatic departure, to say the least, from his work on Black Widow, Alpha Flight, uh, Glitter Bomb, and History of Science Fiction. This is much more of a slice of life, life tale mm -hmm. telling their stories on page 296. Okay, fans of Autobio Comics, take note. Most definitely. Oh wow! Look at look at that artwork on page three hundred for Petra and Liza. That is that is something else right there. Graphic novel: a poet and a dancer form a connection in a bleak world, and the artwork very much equals that <laughs> on page three hundred. By Miroslav Sekulich Struya. I'm glad you said it, and not me. <laughs> that would have taken me a while. <laughs> Uh, and then for something very different on 301 we get plain Jane and the mermaid Jane is incredibly plain hence her name uh, everyone says so her parents the villagers and her horrible cousin who kicks her out of her own house determined to get some semblance of independence Jane prepares to propose to the princely Peter who might just say yes to get away from her father. It's a good plan, or it would have been, if he wasn't kidnapped by a mermaid. Yeah, yeah. you know, you, you never know when that's going to happen. <laughs> Gotta watch that. Exactly, exactly. Well, check that out on 301. Plain Jane and the Mermaid. And at the bottom of that same page, an equally silly Kyle Starks's OGN Karate Prom. <laughs> uh, nice. Yep, that's a title that sells itself. Oh, yes. A loving homage to teen comedies of the 80s as well as badly dubbed kung fu films. Ah, <laughs> uh, what, what, what else do you need, really? What else do you need? Page 305. I don't usually call out Overstreet. This is the Overstreet comic book price guide to Lost Universes, Volume 2. So this, this takes a tour through a whole new set of comic book worlds that have come and gone. Fawcett's Marvel Family, Marvel 2099, Original Chaos Comics, Captain Canuck, Badger and Nexus, DNA Agents, uh, Tim Truman's Scout, Boom's Stan Lee Universe. Wow, I forgot that ever happened. And, uh -huh. and, and tons more uh, of universes that time has forgotten. Uh, in, in price guide form and also in information form on page 305. Page 307. Uh, Hotelator, luxury class defense and hospitality unit. 
<laughs> Take a trip. That looks <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> uh, what, what, what is this like? Uh, like Voltron meets Grey's Anatomy? Uh, a trip aboard Hotelator, the finest hospitality craft in its colony, equipped with jet feet, a hyperspace engine, and single double in adjoining rooms. When a giant alien attacks the ship, Hotelator surviving guests and staff find themselves stranded in deep space. Then 18-year-old intern Anna Green must take charge. Alongside her fellow entry-level service workers, she'll try to control the chaos while rival factions emerge. Wealthy VIPs seize hotel resources, and the musician in residence develops a literal cult following. This is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's like Gundam Wing brought to you by Leona Helms. Nice, nice. <laughs> Uh, Josh Hicks is the writer and artist behind this, and uh, I, Graphic Universe puts it out on page 307, and on that very same page, by the way, a little Golden Books version of Marvel X-Men 97, because why not? <laughs> also, a little Golden Books Funko Pop Seinfeld. Well, those, those are three brands I didn't expect to see in one place. Who are these people? <laughs> The, uh, the Babysitter's Club books uh, continue on uh, page 310 as uh, lovingly, uh, or at least the original full color graphic novels are uh, are drawn by Raina Telgemeier and co-written by her. And then we also have uh, Babysitter's Club Volume 8 by Anna M. Martin and uh, Katie Farina and uh, some of the other uh, ones on there as well. And they also have all the Amulet books, because as I mentioned on a previous previews, uh, Amulet has concluded after all these years. Uh, so that's available uh, in softcover, all volumes of it, all eight volumes of it available on page 310. The Worst Ronin. Just pointing that out for the name on page 312. Maggie Takuda Hall, Faith Schaefer. Nimona meets Attack on Titan. That is a description that I can that I can live for. <laughs> Humanoids with their eight hundred preview pages. Ah, three twenty five. Speaking of turtles, mm -hmm. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimate Visual History revised and expanded. Oh ho! So apparently, this is not the first edition of this book that has seen print. Mm -hmm. This just updates it for the fortieth anniversary with stuff that was not in it originally. Uh, telling the story of uh, the Turtles, the last Ronin, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, uh, as well as uh, the uh, less recent uh, yarns of Ninja Turtles history. That's all on page 325. Attaboy. Attaboy. There we go. That's better. Uh, mm. A illustrated instructional booklet by Tony McMillan. I somehow don't think it's actually an instruction booklet, but you never know. There's a video game from when I was a kid that no one else seems to remember. Attaboy is an action-adventure comic disguised as an illustrated instructional booklet for a video game. The bite-sized hero is forced to avenge the destruction of his father and creator, Dr. Atta, by the sinister, rebellious me mechazoid motherboard. However, the turn of each page unravels a much deeper story of pixelated thoughts, real-world references... And heartbreaking truths. Page 334. Hmm. Attaboy. Mm -hmm. yeah, look at all that. Yeah. Really digging the artwork, too. Look at all those colors, man. Hmm. So many colors. <laughs> Talk about colors. 341. Princess Guinevere and the Jewel Riders. <laughs> hmm. Jordi Belair and and Coy Carrion bringing us that on page 341. This is some Sailor Moon-esque shit right here. <laughs> For sure and no fooling. <laughs> yeah. This is written by Jordi Belair, not not uh, colored by her. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, written by, uh, by Belair, art uh, Coy Carrion, and colors by Sarah Davidson. Indeed, yep. And uh, the... Guinevere, the Princess of Avalon and wielder of the Sunstone, and her friends Fallon and, Tam and Tamara, 
on a quest to keep Avalon safe as enchanted jewel riders. This is like, like this is just straight anime, and I'm 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 here for it. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely a bit of Bishenji Shoujo happening there. Most definitely. Oh, and here from page 342 from Magma Comics. It's a new concept from Steve Orlando and artist Megan Wong. The Scale Trade. Set in a world where dragons are real but critically endangered and being hunted for their magical scales and horns and whatnot. <sighs> of course. Of course. Even in a world with dragons, there's poachers, damn it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that sounds like a really cool premise, and uh, Steve Orlando certainly has the pedigree for it. And as you said, it's on 342. Looks interesting. Yep. See, this is why we don't have dragons in this world. We don't deserve them. Exactly. Exactly. Toxic Summer, page hmm. 348. Talk about a, a retro look to a comic. Oh, yep. Very 90s looking, for sure. Mm -hmm. yep. Derek Charm is the writer-artist behind this. Uh, and uh, he did uh, The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl and Jughead uh, before this. And it's a monster-sized 48-page nightmare beach party that will keep you up all night if you can live long enough to tell the tale. Sounds about right. Yep. Just kind of feels like a Traumaville movie in comic form. Yes. Ooh, oh, and oh, man. That, yeah, it's it's all psychedelic colors, man. Like the last the last like four or five comic books have really been up there with that. Yes, indeed. Yep. So many colors. <laughs> and uh, I'll mention this chef's kiss deluxe edition, <laughs> page 353. Uh, this this collects the entire chef's kiss. This was nominated in 2023 for an Alex Award, a, a Eisner nominee, uh, a GLAAD Award nominee, uh, 2022 New York Public Library Best Book. So if anything deserves a deluxe edition, it is indeed Chef's Kiss uh, by Jarrett uh, Melendez and Danica Breen on page 353. How about The Man from Maybe? Hmm. Uh, yes, with art by Shaky Kane, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, I picked this up in single issues, actually, and now it's available in trade. Nice, nice. Very old school looking uh, superhero action there on 355. Kind of like a cross between the raw high kid and the Sandman from the uh, from the looks of the uh, of the costume. Yep, it's it, it's it's fairly strange stuff. <laughs> Western-infused action and in a post-apocalyptic epic. Page 355. All right, getting closer to tomorrow's. Mm -hmm. Before we get there, Hugo Pratt's The Iron Fist War Picture Library hardcover. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, that Iron Fist, of course. No, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> This is the uh, the lives of the crew manning the Goliath and the battles they fight, ranging from L. Uh, uh, is that a M? Yeah, at, 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 at a mean to the D Day uh, landings. The tank crew rely on each other to get through the hellish situations. Also included in this collection are the big arena featuring Australian soldiers fighting in Egypt, the strong point featuring sappers in Italy. And each of these three stories in the uh, compilation is stunningly drawn by the Italian comics maestro Hugo Pratt just a few years before he created Corto Maltese on page 365. Yeah, kind of sorry Chris wasn't here for that one. That sounds like his cup of tea. Yes, it does indeed. And uh, in trade paperback form on page... 368, we get Orson Welles' Warrior of the Worlds. <laughs> I think I remember mentioning the first issue of this on a, on a previous previews, but... Uh, yeah, but, which know. never actually saw print. I don't think they actually uh, published <clears throat> any issues, so they're just going straight to trade with it. All right, then. Well, then I will pick up the trade, because it sounds awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. What if yep. Orson Welles' infamous War of the Worlds radio broadcast wasn't a prank? I mean, come on. Enough said. It's strong concept right from go. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
Milton Lawson on the writing, Eric Whalen on the artwork chores, 368. 375. This is this is for pants. <laughs> Zowie, the TV superhero craze in 60s pop culture hardcover. That's wow. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah that's definitely for pants um this is by mark voger the same uh writer who gave us uh groovy and hero a go go mm -hmm. also from two morrows yep yeah this is the a, a nice nice reference book to have uh on on the history of of the uh superhero uh 60s boom essentially uh wild world of batwoman is included in there <laughs> in movie form, which I've I've only ever seen as a Mystery Science Theater 3000. Uh <laughs> and uh Booper Heroes. Oh man. Yeah, this is this is too good. <laughs> 375. Do check it out if it's your bag. While you're there, you can take a look at uh, back issue number 153. Mm -hmm. Which is the uh, big baby issue, focusing on the X babies with what looks like a Art Adams cover, mm -hmm. uh, Sugar and Spike, the the FFs Franklin Richards, Super Baby versus Luthor, <laughs> Dennis the Menace, Baby Snoots, Marvels and Harvey's Kid Humor comics. So some star comics in there, I guess, uh, and more, featuring the work of Art Adams, Carrie Bates, John Byrne, Chris Claremont. Scott Lobdell, Sheldon Meyer, Kurt Swan, Roy Thomas, and many more grown-up creators. <laughs> nice. the The X Babies are some of are some of the most fun books that the X Men have ever put out. Quite frankly, <laughs> and right underneath that, by the way, uh, comic book creator number thirty five uh, gives us a celebration of Denny O'Neill uh, in in hmm. in its main centerpiece, uh, featuring an in depth look at his life, work, and legacy. Uh, focusing on the era of relevant comics from the fabled Green Lantern, Green Arrow series uh, to the mod mini-skirted Wonder Woman uh, that brought comics into the modern age. And Bob Levin examines the roller coaster life and chaotic career, create, uh, career of George Caragone from his start as Jim Shooter's protege uh, to becoming the drug-fueled helmsman of Penthouse Comics fascinating to then of course pledging off a Times square hotel to his death at age 29 Eesh. man yeah i did not know about that and now i know about that yep and so do i yep well do check it out for a bunch of different stories comic book, comic book creator number 35 once again on page 375 and uh 377, we'd be remiss not to mention this. Uh, Biographics, George Perez, soft cover by uh, Patrick L. Hamilton, of course, with artwork by George Perez uh, included in there as well, uh, telling the man's story, um, as, as well as going into his many works over the years. So uh, University Press of Mississippi is putting this one out. Mm -hmm. It is a reference book uh, into the life of and history of one of uh, the best creators in comic book history, period. Mm -hmm. And this is coming out through University Press. So you know, this isn't some fly-by-night exploitation cash grab thing. This you is, got it. It's going to be a serious and respectful work. Agreed entirely. Yep. Do check that out. 377. All right. Anything before manga, sir? I do not believe so. Okay, onward we go to the manga section. And started off, uh, I already mentioned villain actor, so let's see if I can find something else. Ah, here we are. 397. Uh, Hira Yasumi. At 29 year, years old, carefree Hiroto Ikuda doesn't have a girlfriend, a full-time job, or a plan for the future, and he couldn't be happier. Hiroto's breezy attitude isn't easy for everyone to understand, though. In a world filled with anxiety, confusion, and grief, Hiroto and the people who surround him are all just doing their best to figure out this thing called life. Nice slice of life manga, uh, story and art by uh, Keigo Shinzo on page 397. 
like the philosophy that seems to be driving this one. Yes, Slowing sir. down is sometimes the best way to move forward. Agreed, agreed, agreed. 399. At the top of it right there, we get ourselves Star Wars Visions, the manga anthology. Story and art by uh, Kamone Shirahama, uh, Kesuki Sato, uh, Yusuki Asawa, and Hariuchi. Top manga creators bring a bold new take to the galaxy far, far away with this fresh manga adaptation of the Disney Plus anime series Star Wars Visions. This is going to be gorgeous. <laughs> one, one thing the Star Wars Visions brought to it is a, a multitude of of art styles and personalities. And that looks like exactly what we're going to be getting here in the manga version of said Star Wars Visions anthology. So $3.99, do check that out. Yep, there's also a volume two of the manga adaptation of The Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. Yep, Yusuke Osawa, uh, the story and art behind that. And uh, yeah, it continues the adaptation of the Disney Plus series. And I will finish us off with at least one more that catches my eye that's not from Viz, considering it seems like Viz has everything I want to read this month. But let's <laughs> let's let's see if I can find something different. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Going once, going twice. Come on, one one cool one cool name is all I'm looking for right now. And. Yeah, here we go. 422. This is offered again, so it's not like it's something new, but at the same time, it, it looks like a lot of fun. The Massively Multiplayer World of Ghosts, Volume 1, by Frederick Jones and Oscar Fong. When, when Niue receives a mysterious device from his long-lost mother, he suddenly becomes a player in a super-secret video game where people use avatars to battle over money, territory, and power, and that's made other players very angry. Can Nile survive and learn where his mother is and why she sent this device? Well, you can check that out. Offered again, uh, the Massively Multiplayer World of Ghosts, Volume 1, on page 422. Hmm. Interesting enough concept. Yep. Here's to be a non-Japanese creative team, too, so it's... Yeah. And why not? 432... Tokyo Pop pulling it out at the last second here. Tokyo Pop Disney manga Stitch the Manga Collection. Okay. Yes, indeed. Yumi uh, Tsukarino and uh, Nayao Kodaka. I've heard about these because basically it takes Stitch to Japan. And it, mm. it, it theoretically is still in the same universe as Leo and Stitch. It's just Stitch sure. leaves Hawaii and goes to Japan, finds new kids, and gets on new adventures. Um, and I've heard that, the, that this manga is supposed to be a heck of a lot of fun. So glad to see it being put out in English uh, over at Tokyo Bob. And that's on page oh. three, 432. Mm, definitely a worthy selection there. Mm -hmm. Anything in the, uh, in the swag bag? I did notice a couple of things. Okay. Uh, which I'm just going to shout out in quick succession here. Uh, let's see. On page M9, down at the bottom, there is kind of a Bishojo-style statue of uh, Michelle Nichols as Lieutenant Uhura from Star Trek. Ooh, very nice. Mm -hmm. yep. That'll look nice on somebody's medal. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's also a couple of uh, fun pop figurines, uh, but before we get to that, though, on page uh, M22, there is a great-looking uh, Adam Warlock statue. Oh, my God, that looks amazing. Yep. Wow. And it's, and it's uh, not too ruinously expensive, either, at 80 bucks. Yeah, that's that's not bad at all. A P full PVC statue, full color. Yeah, nicely done. And uh, let's see if I can find the pops that I meant to mention. Okay, yeah, on page uh, 35, we've got a lovely box set of pops uh, based on the band Queen. <laughs> nice. Uh, and, yep, there they are. Mm -hmm. And below that, a whole series of uh, pops based on the band Slipknot. 
Okay. Wasn't expecting, wasn't expecting that. No. And then on the following page, on page 36, uh, they're, they're talking up this uh, latest in their Simpsons series. It's uh, Homer as Mr. Sparkle. Yes, Mr. Sparkle. <laughs> what a brave corporate logo. Uh, how you doing, fishbulb? <laughs> there's a pop figure fish bulb oh man I, I i stopped collecting pops i may have to buy uh, that one <laughs> yeah you, you, you had to and it, it's a sickness i mean there's there's so freaking many of them oh my god yeah and they I, keep finding new cool things to adapt for example on page 37 in honor of the 85th anniversary of the mgm film there's a series of uh mgm's wizard of oz pop figurines yep a and uh of course Wonder Tweak from South Park because because yeah why not <laughs> Wonder Tweak mm -hmm. oh man I I actually really enjoyed uh, a little bit further up on on M thirty five the uh, the starter Pokemon pack uh, with with Bulbasaur Charmander and Squirtle that's that, that, Ooh, that's yeah. that's also pretty nice. Oh, yes, they're so tiny. Look at them. <laughs> All right, and before I I convince myself to buy anything else. Let's, let, let's go ahead and call that a bolt shot. Yes, yes, let us, it, it has been so declared. Bolt Indeed. Shot. All right, and once again, a reminder, Murd, on the deadline for the best of full ballot submissions. Okay, that deadline is uh, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time on Sunday, April 7th. That's right, so get those uh, ballots filled out. Vote for at least uh, 12 categories and uh, send it into best of at comicgeekspeak.com before midnight on that day. Fantastic. And uh, for, for that matter, uh, one thing I didn't do at the beginning of the uh, beginning of the show that I usually do, I would like to thank you all very, very much over at patreon.com slash comicgeekspeak. Uh, as this has been a big week for us, um, as we are beginning the essentially the reconstruction of the studio, um, as we, as you are all aware, anybody who who has been listening, uh, there was some water damage and uh, and that combined with just, you know, old, outdated equipment. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we haven't been there in recent memory outside of the fact that, you know, it's a sh it's a schlep for some of us. But, you know, that's beside the point. Mm. Um we are slowly upgrading things. We have a new uh, recording computer that has been delivered as well as some new mics. So hopefully no longer will we sound like we're this close uh, every mm -hmm. single time that, uh, that we're recording. So that'll be... You have to listen to the lavaliers scratching in Chris's beard either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, yep. So we'll hopefully be avoiding that. And, uh, you know, knock on wood, sometime within the next month or two, we should be live in studio for a recording that uh, is a highly anticipated recording, and I will leave it at that. Uh, but uh, we are very much looking forward to it. But all stuff that we would not be able to do without you fine patrons over at patreon.com slash comic geek speak. So thank you so much for your continued support of the show in any way that you give it for as little as a dollar a month. And anybody who has not uh, or is not able to contribute spread the word about the show however you can whether it be you know via a review commenting however you can contribute it's great and best part next comic talk i have a voicemail to play because we finally got one into the voicemail box for the first time in a very long time from a listener. wonderful and, and, and it's not drunk cap so it's it's, <laughs> it's an actual it's an actual listener listener who sent in a voicemail that i can't wait to play on the show so yep i'm looking forward to that too now that you've told me and, and you know is it drunk cap was going to be my first question <laughs> <laughs> yep so uh so yeah so uh, we we thank everybody for their support over the years and thank you all very much over at patreon.com slash comic keyspeed for keeping this show a running in any way that you can I haven't plugged my own Patreon in a while either. It's patreon.com slash comic timing if you want to throw me a dime for, you know, for what I do here and what I do elsewhere. Uh, there should be another comic timing coming out soon because I haven't gotten with those folks in a while. And they're chomping at the bit to talk about new things, including X-Men 97. So we will definitely have to talk <laughs> about that at some point. Are you ready to be shamed, my friend? Uh, indeed I am. Okay, fantastic. So the Shane for will be yours in just a moment here and here we go ready to shane it up if you'd like to send us an email that address is comicgeekspeak at gmail.com you can send in your best of ballots to best of b-e-s-t-o-f at 
comicgeekspeak.com. Uh, or if you'd rather leave us a voicemail, as someone actually did recently, you can call 267-702-6642. Uh, you can go to, uh, for the time being at least, you can go to the comicforums.vanillacommunity.com, our original online forum, to leave feedback about this and many other episodes. Uh, or you can also go to our uh, supergroup community on Facebook, um, where you can also leave feedback and just engage in different uh, discussion threads on various geeky topics with your fellow CGS listeners. Uh, you can also uh, follow us on Twitter, where our handle is at Comic Geek Speak. We're also on uh, Blue Sky and other platforms. Uh, you can go to uh, youtube.com slash Comic Geek Speak to watch the video versions of our recent episodes, including this one. So you can follow along in the previews catalog with us and thrill to the various uh, graphics and pages of text as we uh, slog through the catalog every month. Uh, we give special thanks, as always, to those of you who donate to the show monetarily via Patreon or whatever platform you prefer. Uh, we truly appreciate it, and the show would not be what it is today without your help. And as always, we are uniting the world's mightiest heroes, one listener at a time. I gotta get some better get desk toys. <laughs> Man wolf. <laughs> <laughs>